Welcome everybody to Tunes Day Night. I am your host, MC Tune. Tonight we've got, as always, as as I hope to always have, a debate with uh with Ben Ben Hadlock, who uh who's on on uh is that right? King Flurfer. Okay, oh sorry, King Flurfer. I'll change King Flurfer. I'll change that. Uh um anyway, who who on uh, Facebook, what did you say? You you wanted to debate any Anybody, anybody, and then anybody, and then, and then you said I was going to crumble. So I'm looking forward to that. I declared it. Yeah, I, definitely. Yeah, absolutely. And I, and more than that, the comments went crazy. Yes. <laughs> All right. Oh, research Qberth says Tune doesn't know this, but he's already been on one debate tonight. Have you been on one debate tonight? That's not true. Oh, maybe I've been on That's one false. debate debate. I didn't know. Same I didn't even know about it. Already the fake news. Um, and then, all right. So M M Shedler, who who lives in the Minneapolis area, uh, says, "Can McFlatty come over and shovel my driveway? I'll give him five bucks and some pancakes and gogurt." So um, that's Mc, rude. McFlatty McFlatty is no McFlatty is my ugly identical cousin. Oh, okay. I um, thought they were referring to my McSorley shirt. I don't know. Um, nope. Anyway, uh, yeah, Mc, McFlatty. He's yeah, he's a special one. He he's a flat earther. Um, okay, and I don't know if he eats pancakes, um, uh, M. Shedler, but maybe if you could get some hot pockets. So anyway, let's. Uh, well, how about you introduce yourself there, King Flurfer, uh, so people know who you are. I guess absolutely. Yeah, I am the King Flurfer. I rule the Flurf Kingdom. I know all there is to know about Flat Earth. I invite anybody to debate me, to reject my wisdom. I invite it. Um, everybody will crumble in the wake of my logic. And I'm here to present that. And I don't have a platform, so I'm not doing this for any profit. I'm doing it simply out of the goodness of my heart. Because I believe in truth right awesome so you know you know all there is to know so how long have you been flirting hmm. i've been flirting for quite a while you know i mean i remember when i was a kid on the old school internet like the dial-up was the first time um i came across a website that um had the idea of a flat earth it was an earth on top of a turtle. And I thought that was an interesting concept. Is that something that you've ran across? Yes. The, the, it's turtles all the way down. It's turtles all the way down. Yeah. So what is the, what is the origin there? Like why, what is the conception of having a turtle? I, I think it's, I think it's some, some, uh, Eastern cosmology or something. I don't know. So they just randomly picked a turtle. Well, there's an awful lot of Eastern uh, religions where it seems very random. What? Well, why? Why does Vishnu have eight arms? I don't know. Okay. Well, and, and, um, and ho so hopefully, that, that was, hopefully that, I'm right on that. If if I'm wrong on Vishnu's number of arms, on Vishnu, then you're good. Yeah. Don't upset any of the Hinduists. But um, definitely uh, came across it in my early years, and um, I don't think I thought much about it um, up until, uh, I would say, like 2016. Like, then I started, like, uh, looking into more um, against the narrative ideas because I felt like I was lied to about so many things. And... Um, if you look at a lot of like the moon landing, it's clearly a hoax. It's clearly been, uh, it's, it's was done by Stanley Kubrick and, um, he showcases it throughout his movies. It wasn't done by him, but okay. And, um, have you seen the, the, the structure that landed on the moon? Flimsy. I mean, it's made of like tinfoil. No, it wasn't. It couldn't resist that kind of like, no, that kind it, of, it wasn't made of tinfoil. 
Oh, what, what you what one. what you see on the outside is is the the thin fo a foil that they put on. That's not the infrastructure. Yeah, yeah. You, you don't see but the how infrastructure. Would, it's on the but the exterior should be like a siding of a house. You can't put tin foil. Like how it's, would that be any different? It's a, yeah, it's a foil. It's like it's like mylar. You know the the those um those uh blankets that they give you if somebody's ever in a disaster those it's it's more like that material that's just on the outside it's intentionally crinkled to uh reflect uh stuff in r random directions it's called capton is the, the name of the stuff well regardless there's a whole rabbit hole of reasons why it's a it's a hoax uh more than just that um so the the hoax moon landing raise some questions and then looking into all the um the information the data provided by nasa and seeing that virtually everything is photoshopped that everything they present to you is propaganda what, what do you mean every, so, everything is photoshopped uh every photo that nasa presents is photoshopped it's it's none of the pictures are just raw there's not a single picture that NASA puts out that's a raw picture. Why it's all been Photoshop. Why didn't you look? You've you've had since huh? 2016, right? So eight years you've had and you didn't look once. I didn't look once at what? At at the like the raw photos. They're not available. Yeah, they are. Why didn't no. you look? They're totally available. What are you talking about? They're all they there's interviews of people working at NASA doctoring photos saying that they all have to be doctored. They're well, all doctored one way or another. All right. Well, that that would be a that would be something that you'd want to support with with uh, evidence. But uh, here, I'll show you. I'll show you um, uh, the the. Uh, here it is. All right. There is a. Uh, um, raw photo see that there that's that's uh it's not taken, a, it's not take, a raw photo take, taken on this is this is the scan of the slide it's a photographic slide it's a three inch wide photographic slide that you're looking at there and so this is a high resolution scan of it and let me make sure yeah so here here you can download it and you can download it in these different formats and you can download the raw there which is a tiff file an uncompressed tiff which is 1.3 gigabytes. So there you go. You can you can download that raw file right there of that particular photograph, and this this particular group of photographs is 1,096. But if you go to the whole uh, Apollo image gallery, here you have uh, all of the different Apollo missions, and uh, you can pick from whichever ones uh, you're, you're interested in, and you can see. 1,800, 2,400, um, 1,200, 1,400, 1,300. So there's there's a there's no shortage of raw photos for you to examine. So let's let's uh, let's jump in. Let's look at Apollo 16. Here, let's see. They were driving around a lot on that one. So sometimes you get into the sequence of of driving that gets a little a bit much but yeah there you go there's some photos of the earth from there you go from a high elevation there so yeah well i mean obviously they're gonna say that that's raw footage so that's the other thing yeah so, so 40 then, chests yeah. in space so th so then what what you'd need to do to support your claim would be to actually do the analysis of it, but but since you were completely unaware that these even existed, obviously you've not done any of your due diligence to make the claims that you've been making. Oh, I've been doing my due diligence. But your first, your you know, your, one of your earliest things was talking about the photos that you you had you're unaware of. So in eight years, you you have been uh, unaware for all eight years that these photos exist. If those exact photos exist yeah yeah what why you know i i don't know i i wouldn't i wouldn't think that uh that you'd be too braggy about about your uh <laughs> right your 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 uh 
research skills and your king your kingliness if mm, uh, my kingly my kingliness is strong yeah but but you didn't know that these existed right yeah i didn't know that those photos existed no yeah and there there's there's like 15,000 of them there so um and, and how, how much how much funding does nasa receive to, it, to fund all, it, i mean they it's, it's why did, it's, why did they it's lose immaterial why did they lose the ability to, how did, why did they lose the ability to go back to the moon they didn't lose the like, ability. how did that happen oh yeah so so they, nasa nasa gets their budget of course from congress congress in 1972 approved and congress is corrupt as yeah. all oh, hell well, i wasn't done talking so congress approved in 1972 uh, the sh what became the shuttle missions that, that actually happened while Apollo 16 was on the moon. They um, they announced it during the, the mission, the, the uh, astronauts on the moon, Charlie Duke and um, I forget the other guy. They're like, oh, that's awesome. And then NASA or not NASA, Congress said, well, we're not going to give you any more money to continue Apollo. So they did 16, they did 17. They were working up towards 18 and Congress said, Money's done, mothball the whole thing, and uh, we're going to focus on the shuttle. So that that's how it happened that they... That they lost the ability? I mean, they, 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 they couldn't them. recreate it. They couldn't go back to the moon, even if they with the funding. So, so all right, put yourself, put yourself in, as the director of NASA, okay, 1972. Uh, and and uh, you have the new the new thing that has been approved and and is getting all of the attention, and it's going to be, you know, uh, it's it's all it's the shiny new thing. And then Congress says to you that Apollo thing that you're doing, we're giving you no more money for that. What do you do? I don't lose the knowledge that we've invested. But the none information. of the, oh, Good, good. Yeah. So and they did not lose the lose the knowledge. So so then what? Then what do you do? shut the program down yeah you, you have to shut it down because no more money's coming in everything's going all the attention is going to the to the shiny new thing so it, I, it wasn't it wasn't a logistical issue i mean they 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 didn't have the the data to go back to the moon they lost that ability they what, within what, like what did they 30 lose? years time what did they lose what data was lost i don't know you tell me it's your the, claim, not the, it's your claim, not mine. <laughs> That's not how it works. You don't say, you don't make a claim and then say that, that I have to answer the question about it, King Flurfer. It's you that that made the claim. So, what date? What data did they lose? What knowledge did they lose specifically? I'll look it up. So the the for example, the plans for Saturn V are still available. The actual rocket is still available. You can go to it. It's in Florida. The, the one that they were going to use probably potentially for Apollo 19. Um, all of the um, capsules that that uh, splash down, they still have. I went to see one in Dallas, Texas in 2019. Got some pictures of it when I was there. So the, the capsules still exist. So all of the material that is still here is still here. Uh, all of the planning, all of the source code for the software that they wrote, all of the 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 documentation of the math that they did all that is there there's there's uh there's not a whole lot that that uh, is knowledge that's gone i mean i don't have i don't have it set up to share my screen with you but i mean a simple google search will pull it up i mean there's a forbes article how we lost the ability to travel to the moon losing the technology to go to the moon yeah I mean, it's not so, so so like yeah so so what they did have was uh, a bunch of contractors that they had developed over time to build the different components of the the rockets well those contractors their contracts dried up and they're they didn't sit around waiting for nasa to to kick it back into gear they gotta they gotta make uh make the bread for tomorrow so they figured something else out to do right so yeah, yeah so so the none of this uh none of this stuff was lost the plans are still there they didn't ha they don't have the ability certainly they didn't have the ability because they stopped making all of those things so what what ability would you i mean you you said you'd shut the program down which is exactly what they did so so what uh what would you expect differently i would expect them to be able to reopen the program and, and go back to the moon if they had to yeah 
Um, so, all right. So, so, so now you're still the director of NASA and it's 30 years later, right? And, uh, you've got all this stuff that you mothballed 30 years ago or okay. actually better yet, your predecessor. And, uh, and none of the people that worked on it are still there, save a few. And, uh, now, now Congress says to you, hey, you're going back to the moon. Oh, let me go get this 30-year-old technology that hasn't been touched in 30 years. Is that what you do, or do you do something else? What, what's your plan? Well, I'd, I'd go with what we know and build off of it. Okay. So I would, I would, I would, I would use the existing uh, technology and models, and I would look at what has changed since then and evolved and apply it exactly what they did actually so part of the the shuttle program was uh research and development for future stuff so the solid rocket boosters on the side of it they did exactly what you said they should do they reused the technology of the solid rocket boosters from the shuttle missions so the artemis rocket has those same boosters on them so that's one one an example of of one of the uh, several different things that they they reused from the current state of the art sort of technology. Even though those those rocket boosters were really developed in the seventies, um, there. But the 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 plan is, and because it's government, they say, well, you have to use this stuff because that's what we we said in whatever years ago. So you got to use it, and okay, they used it. So. It's one of the things they're reusing on Artemis. So just like you said, they're doing it. Well, what is your stance on the shadows, on all the moon pictures? The shadows are all over the place. Uh, well, number one, if uh, I know you're, you you think that maybe there's multiple light sources, right? Yeah. Uh, one thing is for certain with multiple light sources, you get multiple shadows. So you'd have to show one... A picture where there's multiple shadows to just just get off the, the um, off the ground on that but the other thing is people sometimes uh, don't bother trying to like reproduce something uh, and, and kind of have an understanding of it so let me see here um, I did a I did a quick video of some moon do to do is that it um, mm, oh, I don't know where it is at, at the moment. Um, anyway, as an example, so, so I've seen, I've seen flat earthers put up a video. Oh, I'll stop the share here so we can uh, get back to it here. So I've seen picture, a uh, video where, um, the, they're on the moon and they, they're, they're taking a video of on the moon and they're looking one direction and the, and the, the shadow is off to one side. And then they, they, they turn the camera around to the other side and the shadows go in the other direction. And they're like, Oh, look at that. First of all, there aren't multiple, uh, shadows. There's just a single shadow and the shadows are really crisp too. It's not like you can have, uh, somehow different. I don't know how you would do it. If you have two light sources, you get two shadows. There's there's not a whole lot around that. Anyway, but if if I did this on my table, that's why I wanted to to have it. Um, you put the camera down there, right between these two. I put two objects, one on either side of the camera, and to turn the camera different directions, and the the angle to the shadow changes. There's only one light source in my kitchen. I'm looking at the at the table, and the light sources shadows go in different angles there. So. That's and that's, the flat and the flag, the flag's movement. You know, it's like it doesn't it does the waving. I thought you're the ki I thought you're the king flurfer. <laughs> like, like, well, tell me, McToon, McToon, educate me, man. It's it's not waving. Well, it's 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 very stiff. Yeah, why is that? You you never yeah, looked know. into it. You never it's was starched. looked into it. It's no. starched. Nope. Well, that's right. I mean, I that's why I'm asking you what you think. It's a starch but, but you're, flag. Obviously, again, you didn't look into this. King Flurfer, you're you're not very kingy here. Okay, so they know that there's no wind on yes. the moon, and and if it was if it was actually flapping in the wind, you'd think it was a that would definitely be a thing. 
right? Yeah. But since there's there's no wind, there's no air to, to make it move, if you hang up a flag, a normal flag from, from Earth, it just droops straight down. So yeah. that there's a, 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 I think it's a plastic rod that goes across the top of the flag that holds it oh. out. And when they packed the flag, they, they vacuum packed it into this thing. And that was done months ahead of time. So it's all wrinkled. Okay. There's a plastic rod going across the top of it. Yeah. That's what holds like, it up. Yeah. Okay. Um, what about all the, the Cuber conspiracies? I mean, Cubert, yeah, I, I I played Cubert on Atari twenty six hundred. You know you have to you'd have Not to hold, you'd have to hold the the joystick diagonal, and then the no, button, I remember Kubert. and then you'd you'd go diagonal there. That was that was awesome. Yeah, but the Cu the Kubrick films. What about Stanley Kubrick? Um, the the two thousand one Space Odyssey conspiracy i'm sure you've talked to people about that are you not familiar with the conspiracy at all I, i'm just letting you uh i'm letting you bring forth bring forth the thing so that i can then do what i've done in the last couple th uh, rounds that i've been talking with you again it's it's fun go ahead go okay. for it go for it um with the 2001 space odyssey film like it was obviously so well done and it was prior to our landing on the moon that like it it looked exactly the same. There are ties with Stanley Kubrick and the government. Um and there was that space race with Russia. Um could it have not been easier to use Stanley Kubrick to create um a film uh to replicate it uh for propaganda because propaganda is not like this like pretend thing like there's edward bernays in the 1920s uh brought was a huge was the father of public relations and brought the idea of propaganda um it was all about manipulating public because as soon as we became a democratic society um instead of going from power to the people went to power of manipulating the people so it's not hard pressed uh, to see the u.s government um using stanley kubrick to to create a moon landing video because like how are they communicating with that technology and and having live footage like what is the explanation for the live footage okay. feed wait that's another that's you went off to another thing here so uh, well, I'll, sorry. I'll address i'll address the kubrick thing first of all uh having ties to the government is meaningless lots of people do um if you've watched 2001 it's not that impressive is really not so to to compare 2001 space odyssey to the moon landings is is there's nothing similar about about it um i was hoping you were going to bring up the uh the uh, the fake deathbed confessional because uh because that's fake um but uh have you have you heard that one I won't, no. I won't, I won't make you bring it up and then get embarrassed by it. Uh, anyway, so th there's a, there's a fake, uh, confessional. Um, what was the guy's name? It's in there. Tom Mayak, M-A-Y-K is the actual guy's name. Anyway, uh, so again, it, it would require some analysis that, that shows that it's, it, you know, was made up and, and. It's one thing to do some COINTELPRO to try to fool some people for some, some whatever. Uh, but the, America wasn't just, you know, doing what they did for American people. They were doing what they did because they were in a space race with Russia. And America and Russia were watching what each other were doing the whole time. And, and the communications between... Uh, all of the Russian missions and and Russia, do you think America wasn't listening in? Of course they were. All of the communications between the American missions and and America, do you think the Russians were listening in? Of course they were. They didn't have they didn't have ways like we do today to encrypt digital communication. This was all analog. It was easy for anybody with just a uh, a ham radio to to be able to tune to the correct frequency. So. 
all of the things that 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 they did has been was analyzed in real time by the other side so they were both hypercritical of each other so if if anything was faked russia was was looking for it because then they could win right they they would be the first ones to be crying foul so that good well i mean that doesn't explain that doesn't really explain um the technology to communicate to, oh. to film the footage i i could talk about that technology i'm i'm uh, certainly like the technology better that's my field so um what's your what is your field i uh i write email filtering software uh, okay. at university i studied the computer science and electrical engineering so i have i have a I haven't been an electrical engineer, but uh, I I just have some of that background. So anyway, um, the 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 to communicate with that is uh, certainly certainly a good challenge, but uh, it's it's all analog technology and the stuff existed, and so they they did a few things that were a bit more specialized for the mission, but they they used a lot of of similar components to what was available at the day, at the time. Uh, it was a lot of it was vacuum tubes instead of uh, obviously transistors like we have uh, used since, you know, in huge, huge increasing quantity since the 70s. So um, how did they do it? So they had a, they had some around the earth. They had a whole bunch of different rather large satellites, dishes, and they were aimed at the moon. And then the Apollo LEM had a dish that was aimed at the earth. So that would send back um, from the LEM, it would send back, um, you know, audio, mostly some um, telemetry and then video when they wanted to. So there was, there wasn't a ton of, especially in Apollo 11, there wasn't a ton of live video from the moon, but they did take um, pictures, of course, and then they actually had some video that they took as well. Okay, right on. Um, so do you, what, when it comes to flat earth, like it definitely, um, kind of ties into a lot of, um, my beliefs in Christianity. What is your perspective on, um, like biblical scripts as historical context versus just mythos? biblical scripts yeah like but not more than just the bible because there's also the you know there's all of the um there's tons of scriptures there's all kinds of scrolls that they've put together because it's more than just one book they found scriptures all over um europe and africa and the gaza strip and they they've put them together and they found what was most cohesive into these different um books you know, so we have the 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 New Testament, you know, which has, um, you know, a revised version of all those scripts. Like, I just want to know what your personal perspective is. Is that just a complete mythos to you? Or do you find that there's real historical um, evidence in those scripts? It, it, I, you keep saying scripts. I, I don't I don't know what I. I've not heard people the refer books. to the Bible as a script before. Because I'm talking about all of them, you know, as, as a as a collective. Like, do you don't do you don't find them to be evidence of a time? You know, they're all written scriptures of of events and places, and they're all over the place. Okay. I mean, do, I, I, I'm, well, do I don't you not know, find that relevant. I, I I don't know how that that relates to the topic we're discussing. To the flat Earth. Yeah. Because that is, that is, do you, have you not read the Bible? I have. You have? Yeah. And have you read the flat earth stuff? There is. How a, the world there, is described? There is no verse that says the earth is flat. You know that, right? No. You did not know that? I mean, they talk, they describe it. They don't blatantly say it's flat, but they describe it in the Bible. Oh, what verse? I'll have to Google it. Come on, King Flurf. 
All right. Uh, Stringer News 1, I'll, I'll read uh, from the, the audience here. It says, thank Titty Cock. Yes. It's a Toons Day doubleheader. Uh, Fa Q, uh, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Q-Tube, first name Fa, he almost got me, says, it's in his anthem, King of the Fools by Tw Twisted Sister. So is your anthem King of the Fools by Twisted Sister? That's rude. That, that's rude, Mr. Q-Tube. I see spin says cigars were made by a glober. Your move, sir. I mean. <laughs> uh, all right. FDFE says flurfs made my make my brain sad. Do you know FDFE? Fight the flat earth? No, I don't. No? All right. Well, he's gonna want to talk to you after me. Unless, unless uh, people think that you're a fan of uh, any particular poet. So Sir Almond says, uh, Ben Flurfy Flurf, Flurf, whatever he calls himself, is trying really hard to play this character. Bad Poe. You, you don't know the verse yet? The right. Poe, I'm looking for it. All right. FDFE says, Don called both Ozian and me MC2. <laughs> So FDFE was just in a debate um, uh, just before this with, uh, yeah. it was a 2v2. So Ozian and FDFE were the, the Globers and it was uh, this this guy that has no clue of understanding of gas pressure. That's, you just call him that. And 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 Dawn. So Dawn called both Craig and Ozian me. I wasn't oh. even there. Rude. They're mean out there. I don't, you know. All right. No, did, the comments are mean. Did you find it yet? Um, no, but it's in there. It, it, it's definitely in there. It's I, definitely in there. I, I don't, I, dude. If you're it gonna, talks about the, the, fur, the, well, what's your, if you're going to Edgar Allen this thing, you got to be a little more sharp. All right. What, what's your, what's your, what's your explanation on the firmament? The firmament is the expanse. It's just a, it's an area of, of nothingness or of area or of distance or of, you know, something between places. So if, when it says. But it that, describes that, it, describes it as a solid dome. It, well, there's multiple, multiple meanings for it. So uh, cherry picking one over the other isn't, isn't evidence for a anything, dome. But, yeah. So. Well, it, it, it well, does, it, but you're being disingenuous because I know, you know what the Bible says about it. Oh. So it does describe it as a solid dome. Okay. You know, and it does and so, it does. So what what's the word in Hebrew? I don't know. What what is the word in Hebrew? Rekia. Okay. Okay. And and that in modern Hebrew is what they use for sky. Uh in in uh, ancient Hebrew it meant sky or so you're expanse, so you're claiming or, it's a or, translation or it meant to so hammer it's a translation out surface. Thing? So the original Reikia was trans uh, translated into the Vulgate as firmament, firmamentum, and okay. the but it was uh, sometimes some some people say it was a mistranslation of of the Hebrew that it was actually the Syriac. Syriac is a different language that's very similar to Hebrew, and and Syriac had a different meaning for Reikia, and so when it landed in the Vulgate, which is the Latin version, they used the word firmamentum. Then when the King James uh, translated it, they they went to the Vulgate, not to the original Hebrew, and they did not translate that word. They transliterated the word, so they made a new English word firmament that didn't uh, didn't have a meaning before really. What, so, what do you, what do you mean they transliterated it? So transliterating is is where you where you don't translate a word, you take the original word from the other language and you bring it into your language. And then you 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 do what you need to it to make it work in your language. So Latin has different endings to words. E yeah. isti it istis imus errant, or for as an example of six different endings for words in in Latin. So those different endings to words, depending on the the tense and the the gender and the um, future and past and and who you know, all the, all these different me reasons that you'd put different endings on a word in in Latin. Well. That doesn't work in English, so they don't bring those along with. They just, they don't. So it's not firmament time. Are you, but do you, do you think Hold it on. was Hold a on. Hold on. intentional? 
no, it's so so the the Latin to I think the Latin is firmamentum, okay. uh, and so but they didn't bring the um they didn't they they just said firmament they, that's the transliterating part of it. But do you think so? Do you so it was intentional the transliteration? It wasn't an intentional act. That they just, that they did not use a word like expanse. That they described that it in quality. such a way that was not. Uh, uh, correctly translated as you said well, it's it not was, translated it was not translated at all they used the, the latin word if you wanted to do that's it I'm right asking. they should have did, gone to did the they Hebrew. do that and so, so do that, that that's people's issue sometimes with king james is they didn't go to the hebrew they went to the latin why wouldn't you go to the hebrew makes sense though in in the 1600s they didn't have easy access to those things today you can bring up dozens of of uh, photographs of original um scrolls of uh, you know different copies of different scrolls of, of almost any portion of scripture that you wanted couldn't do that in the 1600s you had what you had all right Matun. You did you didn't find the verse. All right. Isaiah 40, 22, Job 38. No? Okay. All right. So so what actual like real physical solid evidence uh, is there for flat earth? Eight years. Eight years you got. So what for evidence for well, flat earth? I mean, I just have a lot of evidence against it. So you don't have any evidence for it? I don't have any there's no evidence it's, for it because there's nothing evidence. S O P. Standard operating standard operating procedure for flurfs is to not have any evidence for uh, flat Earth. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. So well, so so you are you are uh, one of you know just an unending line of flat Earthers that have zero evidence for flat Earth. Uh you know, unless maybe there's a poet you're talking about. Well, I definitely feel like there's a big defense against the narrative. So, and there doesn't seem to be any reason for me to believe otherwise. You know, I just haven't been persuaded. Uh, well, it, obviously in eight years, you haven't looked, right? You, your research skills are, are definitely well, part, here, of the problem, not? part of the problem. I'm here right now. Is this not? Is this not? Well, no. This is This isn't. This isn't research. This is you declaring that you can crumble anybody with I, your. Yeah, with, and I crumble with, with your. Everybody that believes in the flat Earth is watching this, knowing that I'm right. With your incredible, so nothing that you brought so far. But 100 percent of people that believe in flat Earth are going to say that I won. Oh yeah, they and always take really, they always take a victory so lap after a, after a loss. It's cute. Well, it's 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 just it's what it is. So I mean, you, right. you can you can declare that you won All as right. well. So so now, which uh, which what, what's your favorite? Then go go ahead, yeah. go for it. What's what's favorite your favorite? What? Your favorite, favorite what? your favorite not evidence for flat Earth that that convinced you. Um, the Stanley Kubrick films. Yeah, that has nothing to do with the shape of the earth though does it uh true or it, false that it, doesn't it change of, the shape of the earth it it led me into flat earth okay 100 so, so, yeah so it my, shook my system so i'll ask the question again what was what was your yeah you know the, the big thing that that convinced you that the earth was flat well just videos on youtube of course yeah so which particular evidence there's tons there? of them Oh, there's just tons of them. Go ahead, go ahead. Just, just uh, chuck one out there. I'm, I mean, I mean, not you know all of them. What are you talking about? Yeah, but I'm not asking. I'm not. I, I'm not asking me what's my favorite flat Earth evidence. I'm asking you what's your favorite flat Earth evidence. My favorite flat Earth evidence is the firmament in the Bible. I mean, I, I, I don't. I think. Ch I think chapter, a, chapter I think, and verse, please. Dude, you didn't even grow up going to church. 
Oh, I went. Oh, I went to church, buddy. What? What church? Did you go to church? What church did you go to? I went to uh, none of your business. You just proved my point. You don't think I'm a Christian man? I don't think that you grew up going to the church. Uh, all right. What, what are you? What are you? What are you looking at here? What uh, you, you're trying to trying find to your find favorite? What? Well, so who yeah. are your favorites? Isaiah, Let's do four, this Isaiah yeah. four twenty two. So, uh, who are who are the flat earthers that you think are the some of the ones that that you watch more often than others? Well, I've seen a few on TikTok, like. I don't know. They're not like celebrities. It's eight years. You've been you've been uh, flurping for eight years. So you so you said. Name yes. one. Name one uh, that uh, is on YouTube. A celebrity. Who, no, just, is there, just 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 one. There, just one. I didn't. Just any. I don't know, man. They're, they're they're just people out there, man. I don't know. I don't know what their names are. I don't keep track of all. I didn't. I didn't realize uh, that they were so so such big celebrities these oh, flat earth kings they're not they're not uh of course within their oh, but chambers I... they are but uh so all right D well, name one. Not... can you name the challenges can you name one flat earther that makes youtube videos or tiktok videos before i solve this go Well, yeah, I can Google it. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Google it. <laughs> you're going to have to Google it because uh, you're Edgar allen -ing here a little bit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm Edgar Allen. Quoth oh, yeah. the Raven. Right? In eight years, you can't name one. Oh, well, Nathan Thompson. Nathan Thompson's a good dude. Oh, good. What What? What do you What do you think you about him? Up? What do you think about him? He's aggressive. He's aggressive. What did you think about his uh, uh, what went down between him and Ben? I don't know. I just watch his uh, him talk about flat Earth. I think he's pretty pretty on the money. Yeah, but what he's did you buddy too? Yeah. But, um. So when he and Ben were on tour, what did you think about the what you know the doings that transpired there? I don't know. I didn't, I didn't pay attention to their tour. Their really? You no, know, man. What are you talking about? You didn't you know where I just they... follow those guys? Where, where I watch. They... I watch. I. I All right. I'm so living. I, right. I don't just. You, this is like your job. So you got I Nathan Thompson. my life to this. So who else? Who else? Can you name um, one more? His buddy, his buddy, his name, whatever that other guy was named. He's got a friend that's really bright. Yeah. Nathan's ben... not so bright. But. Uh, I, I, I agree with you there. Okay, can can we get a high? Can we get a high five on that one? Right, right. Boom. There we go. I like him. I like him. Yeah, he's cool, and uh, he's got a buddy that was really, really smart. I disagree with you there. <laughs> well, you, you know the buddy. Yep, he's not very smart. He's good at lying, though. He's really good at lying. Who is it? And uh, and word salad. Lots of word salad. Just, just constant, just, just constant what word name? salad. What was his name? Is ben. it? Oh, is it Ben? Huh? It's Ben. It's Ben. Yeah. I don't know. Is he the? Is he? Uh, yeah, maybe that's the same guy. I think I've, but I've seen. I can't remember their names, but to him, but uh, that guy is really smart, and he backs up Nathan. Nathan's really convicted. Yeah. So our. And, our uh, who who are you talking about, Ben? Right or somebody else? I believe so. If that's the same guy that we're talking about, I, I, yeah, I don't. Uh, but you think Ben is really right. smart? As I recall, hmm. the same guy. Yeah, Todd's tech tale says Nathan Thompson has a friend. He's not Nathan Thompson. Is that me? Ed Edgar Allen confirmed. Um, let's see. Uh, Shovelhead Steve says Ben equals. <laughs> Uh, Ron. Well, a Mo version of it. Of uh, Ron. Uh, C. J. Lamoureux says, "Wondering when King Poe is gonna start with the Naas." 
Uh uh. There you go. Um. Oh, it went away there. We got uh, Mr. E Man says apparently it took King for eight years to to work out how to operate the on button on his computer. Let's all hit the like button. Ryan says Cradle of Aviation has the Lem slated for Apollo nineteen. So the Cradle of Aviation, uh, I think that's a museum. So the the Lem from and Demonic Leprechaun. Yes, you are correct. That is what he said. So, uh, um, what? Yeah, no one can remember his name. It's Witsit. Oh, yeah. See, when you said he was really smart, I'm like, that's not Witsit. <laughs> oh, you know who it is. You well, know I know Witsit. Witsit but you said really oh, smart. Yeah. Really smart Witsit. They don't match. So, okay. Have well, you, oh, have you ever been to Menards? Men no. No? Do you know what Menards is? No. No, it's a hardware store in the Midwest. You save okay. big money at Menards. Sarcastic Barman says we can build a Saturn V tomorrow. No. Much the same we can't build a Model T tomorrow. Now the, the technology still exists, but we're not going to go crank one out. The other thing is a Model T isn't quite doesn't quite have the features and the safety uh, things that you, you'd have on a a car today so if you built if ford said hey we're gonna make the model t we're gonna pull out the plans from the model t and we're gonna build it uh that would not be road legal uh, the current model t's are only allowed on because they're grandfathered in so it's a lot more difficult to make a model t and put it in production you have to recreate a whole factory exactly assemble it. you nailed it so um same thing for for making a, a saturn V rocket so yeah you have to start all over really to, to to do it to do it well you start all over because another thing is um the the rules for human rated uh spacecraft have greatly changed they were a little bit uh yosemite sam back in the uh the 60s there they knew it was dangerous they knew there was a a, a good chance of things going crazy and they still went uh, they still jumped in there. Uh, the the crew from Apollo One died in a fire inside the capsule, and then they still went up after that. The 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 amazing stones that they had. So, um, let's see. What uh, what direction will the moon travel during the April eighth solar eclipse? I don't fucking know. I believe you. Uh, let's see. Alyssum says, KF Kingfler. Pilot here. Yes. Why do we have to yeah. count for the globe whenever we calculate our flight distances? Also, why is there no functional FE-based map? So why, does, uh, why do pilots have to account for the distance when they're calculating their flight plans using globe? Uh, she's, she's not doing any calculations. And what calculations is the pilot doing? They need they need to know the distance between their their uh where they start. Do they, they, they have end. instruments? That, they have instruments that do all this. That there is certainly software that helps them do that if they want, and uh, but you can do it manually, and the manual uh, calculations come up the same. If you doubt that there that somehow there's a black box in the computer doing it, you can do it by hand, and so the the outputs is the same. The the Haversign formula is used to calculate the distance between two points on the surface of a sphere. And then you input the radius of the sphere into it. So the radius of the globe goes into that and it gives you the distance between the the, uh, the points. That's very important in an aircraft because if you don't put in enough, what happens? It falls and crashes. Yeah. And this, this isn't, I didn't know this until I started looking into it. But uh, let's say you load up your 747. Just say, just top it off. We're going to go from Portland to Seattle fill up the tanks i want to make sure we have plenty when we get there you can't actually do that because the plane will be too heavy when it lands you know that yeah you did yeah like the hudson bay incident yeah if it, the, like the, if the, the, the plane's too heavy 
Yeah, go ahead. Anyway, so so if if it went from Portland to Seattle and it was a full, if they filled it all the way to the top, it'd be too heavy when they landed. So they'd have to dump fuel. So if they ever have to right. do an emergency landing, one of the things they do is they see how much fuel they have in there. And then they see if the runway is long enough and if they have enough, uh, if what the weight is to see if they can land the plane. And if not, they'll dump the fuel, which kind of sucks. It's rather expensive to dump the fuel. And, uh, and then, you know, people don't like having fuel dumped on, on them, even if it's from 30,000 yeah. feet. Yeah. One time we took off and we actually hit a, um, a bunch of geese and it went through the wing of the plane and we had to circle Portland for like an hour to land because the, to burn the fuel because it was too heavy. Oh, there you go. Yeah. So, so, so getting, getting the amount, the distance between the start and stop location is critical so that you know how much fuel you don't want too much you don't want too little of course there's uh, there's you don't just get just enough you have to have some some extra for you know if you get there you have to do some uh waiting some holding pattern or if if uh, you get diverted to a different airport airport so there's there's extra that they put in but it's not uh, just fill it up to the top yeah. yeah and you're not familiar with the hudson bay incident i, I am oh, okay all right but that was because they got a bunch of got a bunch of they had they had a uh bird was, rich, there was a weight issue they, they had bird rich fuel didn't they yeah but yeah but they had too much fuel or bird, too, rich, too heavy too bird heavy. rich air it was what it was bird rich air so so bird so, rich air what, you what is that yeah so so uh you know there's a couple things that you need in order to uh to run the the jet you need fuel right and you need air and uh sometimes the air has a little is a little too rich there's too much bird in it oh yeah yeah you don't want you yeah, don't want to especially if they're ravens you have a whole bunch of ravens in there qu quoting things as they as they fly into the uh, yeah but the, and, the, and the i thought tank. the idea was they had to land it into the the bay because if, if they tried to land on the strip it would it was too heavy I don't wasn't think that, that I don't think that was the case. Oh, it wasn't? No. No. <laughs> so why they lined into the bay? Uh I think that the engines uh, had a little issue. So they decided to just drop it? Uh well, I think I think the airplane decided it was about to drop. To my to my knowledge, the airplane said, I don't care what you think, I'm gonna go down right now. Right. Anyway, so then Alyssum says, also, why is there no functional flat Earth map? How is there no fun? There is a functional flat Earth map. Oh. Yeah. What map is that? Seven. Next. Next. What map is that? Do you have it? Can you? No. No. Is it? Is All right, it, McTune. Is it? Are we one? done with this? Yeah, it's that one. Yeah, of course. All right. Are we wrapping this up or what? Are you done poing? I'm not. I don't know what poing is, but I'm. But I gotta. I have other things. I gotta go. I appreciate it. It was fun. All right. I appreciate it. Po, po on. All right, Matum. Uh -huh. Whatever you say, man. All right. I don't know. What po, you po, po on. What is that? What are you talking yeah, about? Yeah, just, 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 uh, just po on down the river. <laughs> Right, I, don't, I don't know. Cool. I don't know which way you're pulling. <laughs> All right. I don't know. All right, buddy. Thanks, bye. man. I appreciate bye, it. Ki bye, King Flurfer. See you, man. Thanks. All right. So that was definitely Poe. Eighty-four percent said said Poe. Oh, he didn't fool anybody. Um, he's still in the Zoom call. Hey, how you doing? You can you can drop the Zoom call whenever you're ready. There's like a, in the bottom corner. There's a, there's a little end. There you go. There. <laughs> That's the worst Poe ever. I was having Poe uh, uh, feelings beforehand. I'm like, I don't know. And then in the um, when we were talking, I explained to him what a Poe was. Because last week, um, last week we had. Uh, Jaden, 
the whatever he called himself concaver after during the during the live stream last week i'm like definitely a po when he had the the pickle the 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 cucumber up if you didn't see it you got to watch it he had he had the picture of the the cucumber up like it was a limp limp pickle and then he had another picture of it later where it was boy i'm like at that time I'm like there's no way he's total po he's not he's not i had a, a half an hour or 45 minute voice call with him last night he is in he had he connected in his buddy that's doing door-to-door -door sales with him this summer. Um, and uh, his buddy's like, yeah, stop with the bladder stuff or concaver stuff. He was like annoyed with him. So anyway, yeah, total Poe. Um, not not very impressive poeing. He couldn't name one single thing um, about Flat Earth. I... I I even I gave him Isaiah forty twenty two and he heard Isaiah four twenty two. So why is he running away from the map? He, he, he ran away from everything. Uh, Glober Mom says, "Quote the Raven, nevermore." Chris says, "Wow, for twenty dollars, it would be wrong to state the Semitic people two thousand years ago or more had drawings. It would not be wrong." To say uh, that they have drawings of how they understood the Earth to be, which was a cross section at the equator depicted a plate covered by a solid dome. Um, certainly, certainly there were people that that was their um, their position. Yep. Um, but the question when you're at, when when flat earthers talk about the Bible, they're not saying their claim is not. There were people of the day that thought this. That's not the claim because it, it, that, you know, you don't think that something is true just because some other group of people thought it was true. And you don't think it was true because some other group of people who wrote your holy book thought it was true, right? Because there's a whole bunch of things that they thought that was true. That was definitely not true. And people don't don't adhere to now that that do follow these holy books. So that's not that's not it. They are trying to assert that God was communicating a certain uh, certain knowledge. So um, that's that's what they are trying to claim, and and uh, so if if the author who was a human put some information into it that was reflective of his culture. That doesn't mean in the context of, of any holy book that that is the intention of the holy book. Um, it's particularly enlightening when, when the, the stuff that they're talking about is, um, is figurative in nature anyway. So like the, uh, the one um, in Job that says, it's like a um it's it's uh like a seal so that the, the clay like a seal so it's like a ring we push it into the the seal when you seal a letter or that's on clay they push a seal on it to show who made the the, the pottery um it's like a seal that's an actual simile and it's a simile in the original hebrew thanks to Nereal, uh round thinker who who uh Taught me a lot about that. So, um, metaphors aren't uh, aren't literal, and taking them taking a metaphor as literal is is uh, I don't know why you'd you'd think that was a wise thing to do. So, anyway, um, Mad Apples says, "Hey Ben Hadlock, please stop spreading misinformation and lies out of the kindness of your heart. Thank you." Well, I think I think he he uh, he realized he was poing a bit too. Uh, I was out of his league as a po. <laughs> so Alyssum says Italian Bible calls Earth a globe. Isaiah forty twenty two. Interesting. There, there's a uh, certainly a couple other translations that do that too. So it's it's ambiguous. Different different uh, definitions of the word have been picked by different translators over time. Uh, 
Otto says the seal is used to identify the creator. So it's related to the potter's seal, right? Yeah, it, it's, it's, um, it's identifying who, who made it. So in the context of, of the verse of Job, it's, it's God saying, I made this. It's not God saying, this is the shape. So, cat ions and seal ions. This is Tau software. Very nice. Uh, all right. King uh, Sid Almond says, King Flurf, more like King Gish Gallop. Am I right? I think King Poe. And that was, I've had a few Poes on. He's the worst. Industrial Nerd, he did better. He was. Industrial Nerd wasn't great either. I mean, he start, started talking about metrology right away. I'm like, wait a second. Flurfs don't know how to measure things. <laughs> Maker's Mark. Yeah, that's another nah, good good name for it. Um, uh, all right. Melodic Lyrics is if Flurfs didn't claim they won when they didn't, they wouldn't have any wins. <laughs> or, or be Flurfs. Oh, that's so good. So there was apparently there was on Twitter. There's a great debate uh, on on uh, one of their. Uh, I don't know how they think that they had a great debate on there. Like they they have their flat Earth Fridays. At least flirt. So on Twitter on X, it's um they have now voice chat, and and it's there's but there's no live conversation like here, none of that. There's no um ability to share your screen so so you know you go to discord if you've been on discord there's a chat that's associated to the to the voice chat right so you can so people can talk and type to each other and it's kind of like this right it's it, and and in discord um and then in discord somebody can say hey i'm going to share my screen and then they can share screen and then you can go view what they're sharing well on x none of this is possible you cannot share your screen and there's no chat associated to it. So there's like this event that's the live space event. And then people can have a conversation about it by tweeting it or by posting comments on it. But it's not this 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 sequential thing that's time-based that, that flows. So if you post, people might not do it. They all have to sit there and constantly refresh their screen. It's terrible. So it's basically 1980s party line. You know, it's a bunch of girls talking about their new favorite Duran Duran album. So uh, it's it's uh, not very, it's not, and you can't share evidence there. Oh, I've got, I've got an orange, an angry orange cat coming. Hey, kitty. How are you? Hi, turtle. Oh, and then we've got one more coming. How you doing? He's like, what am I doing here? What's going on? Are you going to meow for him? No? nothing no all right you can go all right and then this one what's going on what's going on what's going on what's going on? oh no how do we go how do we go how do we go <laughs> all right penguin good puppy <laughs> there's penguin look at her she's like like is there food i want food you got any food there it is all right good girl good girl all right she's she's not as easy to pick up <laughs> So, uh, Penguin really thinks that she's a cat. She lays on the back of the couch. She jumps between the couch and the chair like the cats do. She's she's funny. Okay. Um, I totally got off track there. Oh, yeah, that X uh, on X. So, apparently, there was some big debate that they had. I don't know. It was between two people I've never heard of. It can't be that big. And uh, they're like, this guy totally won the debate. Like, wait a second, the only people in your, your live space basically are flurfs. So they did a poll at the end. And the and the echo chamber of flurfs voted that the flurf won. Well, of course they did. <laughs> it's an echo chamber. So <clears throat> uh knock knock it off, Flur 24 says good evening. Well, good evening. So anyway, uh if there are any this here's a here's an open invitation to flurfs or to anybody else. If you want to pop in right now, um, I mean, we could we could wrap this out with a uh, um, a uh, a call in show here. Let's do that. So, 
uh, Leslie Rower says, no offense, Toon, but that arm is a lot prettier than you are. Well, I'm glad you think my daughter's arm is prettier than me. <laughs> pretty, pretty good. Um, pr pretty, pretty easy to, to, I've even covered it up. It's so ugly, actually. It's, I mean, it's just, it's just a normal arm. So, <clears throat> all right. Um, Tim Davidson says, take this potato, boil and mash them, stick them in a stew. Thank you, Tim. Todd's Tech Tales says, Nathan Thompson has a friend. <laughs> oh, confirmed. Exactly. I mean, he, he had, I, I I didn't try hard enough to, to bring him off track on that, but I certainly could have. PJC net dude. You want to come in? He he always he has he's always too skittish. He's always too skittish. But uh, you could PJ or Shifty Shifty Eyes. Come on, Shifty Eyes has been uh, quite a while in the uh, the chat here. And uh, oh, what did you post? Seriously, don't don't be saying that about penguins. I'm. I didn't give you the mod status so you could say disparaging things about penguins. <laughs> uh, all right. Um, <clears throat> Lord Illuminous Pooh says the guy that killed Batman's parents probably saved thousands of lives. Mind blown. That's true. PG Tony says seals are roughly cylindrical, furry, and have flippers. Is that the shape we're talking about? Because now I kind of wish Earth were seal shaped. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's great. All right. Does, uh, let's see. <laughs> anyway, uh, if, if anybody wants to join, uh, yeah, oh, well, all right. Uh, you can DM me. I'll, I'll leave it to DMs, either either on Facebook or Discord. That's where I'm at right now. Um, how about calling Santos for an update on your pee drinking regime or innovation? Oh, my goodness. Um, I, I've tried calling him several times on a Tuesday, and he, he was every time he could not answer. So I think he he might have some you know it's it's his uh his, his daily bath from the the orderlies, uh, or something his you know bathing. Uh, Teddy Cass says, call Dawn in. Who's who's Dawn? The the Dawn that didn't know that Craig was not me. I don't even know who that Dawn is. I saw the the thumbnail on uh, Jaren's um Jaren's thing. Uh, and I'm like, well, that's not, that's not, uh, that's not the dawn I was thinking of. So <laughs> call Kevin LEG. So, oh yeah, Kevin LEG on uh, Thursday on Jaren's show. Uh, um, FTFE is going to live stream on his channel. And then I'm going to do the after show on my channel on Thursday, six o'clock central time, 6 PM central time. So be looking for that. Um, it's, it's a, 2v1 kevin wanted it he demanded it that way and craig and i are like okay whatever anyway kevin kevin is is absolutely certain that the surface of ice rinks are, are flat and uh and he was going on and on about this on on facebook and i'm like yeah of course they're not flat they're curved matching the surface of the earth but it's not much they're not very big so Andrew Irwin emailed me. Okay. Uh, all right. I hear you. Do you want me to read this right now? I'm in doubt. But okay. Well, I, I'll, I, I'll, I'll read that later. <laughs> so anyway, oh, let's see. Oh, and then just heard from modern day debate. Right now, it's on that screen right there. I'm looking at it. Uh, might be on Modern Day Debate on Tuesday with uh, with a guy that was who's a big talker. 
So that'd be crazy. Um, I see spin says I missed the conclusion. Did he break character? Finally, he really quickly is like, is this enough? Are we done? I got to go. So he left. So yeah, he didn't, he didn't, uh, um, he didn't really didn't like break character, but no, he didn't. Yeah. Anyway. All right. Yeah. Um, mm, mm, okay. So yeah, he buckled. So yeah, I, I mean, it, he didn't have anything. He was just kind of trying to, he, he came unprepared to Poe. I mean, if you're going to Poe, Poe better. When is King Crew going to get his book? Well, King Crew, are you, it, dude, you got to come to the eclipse in Dallas, not Dallas, um, uh, North Texas. So give Chile a call. See if he can come on. Oh, wait, he, never mind. Chile de Castro is in jail for six months. If you, so a lot of people that used to do flat earth debunking went over into sovereign citizen and first amendment auditors and the, those, those people. And so like team skeptic and Irish demon and, um, Johnny O and, uh, brainy beaver. Like that's kind of the, the, the thing that they cover now. And so Chile de Castro has been one of these, these guys that that's just an awful person. And, uh, he finally, finally got to court finally uh, wound up in court i watched the proceeding and uh the this was this was crazy the prosecution so it was two misdemeanors he was found guilty of this was the sentencing the prosecution recommended that they be uh suspended that they, he doesn't serve them that was the prosecution he had been if you watch it <laughs> um he did not make the judge happy Anyway, so then the judge uh, decided that he would, um, or she she decided that he would full the, uh, serve the full sentence for the misdemeanor, two, three month consecutive jail sentences, not uh, not uh, overlapping, but one after the other for so for six months. And he goes, "What, what do you mean suspended?" She goes, "Nope, going to jail right now." And then she walks out. It was great, so. Oh, I've got, uh, all right. I got, I got a flur, a fake, a fake flur. I don't, I don't, I don't know if you can call them in prison or not. So, all right, we got, all right, we got Leslie coming in. Um, but, uh, there's a flurf that I just sent a, I don't know if it's a flurf or not. Uh, name is Cannabolic, Cannabolic. So we'll see if Cannabolic is a flurf. Uh, how are you doing? Are, are you are you in yet? I do. All right. Oh, oh, it's it's Jalen. Whoever Jalen is. So. All right, I see Jalen. Jalen, how old are you? Yeah, how old are you, Jalen? Oh, okay. Um, I'm I'm getting the scene set up. So, as Jalen. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh, J Jalen, how old are you? Okay. All right. So, so, all right. Jalen, are you the one that messaged me on Discord? Okay. So, I, I just, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to have a much leeway with you here. Um, cause you're 16. So, and I won't have you on screen, but, uh, you said, stop dodging. Let me in. I have unrefutable evidence for flat earth. So what is this evidence or are you just poing? Well, chop chop. Oh, hold on. I'll I'll change that. Give me a second. All right, go ahead. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're all muted. 
which which is probably which yeah i i may i may want to have anyway so yeah so uh, all right unrefutable proof okay okay jalen a 16 year old is sharing screen all right that this is your evidence yep where right, do you well, see the curve on this uh, well, can't walk, walk me through it here walk me through it all right i'm gonna ask you a question which is the greater distance a to b or c to d i uh, don't know it depends how high the observer is and how wide the camera focal uh the camera field of view is so do you so have tell those me, do you have those um, two tell me uh, where, pieces of information um no tell me where you would see the curve here well how high is it um about six feet okay six so feet how, how much how much um how much curve does the globe predict at six feet high left to right if say you have a uh, 90 degree field of view what how much you, you did the math on this know. right oh you don't know well then then no, it's, if you I can't had a file on yeah, yeah so so jaylen if you can't make a prediction and then test that prediction then you're not really doing science but can you see the curve here uh there's a line over where the curve would otherwise be so even if there was curve you couldn't see it because you've obstructed with obstructed it with a line but you can see even without the line there's no curve it's flat okay well, again I'm, I'll, I'll just go back to this one what is the globe prediction for the amount of curve that is visible at that elevation um i don't know okay so so if you can't if you can't make the prediction then we can't test to see whether or not the prediction is correct that's the essence of science you compute the consequences of your of your hypothesis and then you compare those cons the consequences that you computed to observation but you did not do that part you didn't compute the consequences so we can't Are you we, right can't, now? we can't compare the uh, the observation to reality so okay it was this all you had are you pulling? No, I have a, I have another one. This was just to test the waters, pretty much. Cool. All right. What's All the right. other one? Stop sharing for a second. All right. All right. You ready to get debunked? Looks uh, like your problem. Yeah, bring it. Bring it on. Oh. Bring it on. We're we're bringing it on. Do you have another meme? Is that what I bet that was going to be? Yeah. Yeah. Not a meme. And and just to, before you haven't shown me anything yet, I'm gonna probably ask you the same series of questions, uh, details about the observation, including computing consequences. So mm. I hope I hope you got it. So all right. All right, you see my screen? Uh I do. There you go, yeah. Yep. So this is Lake Baikal, Serbia uh Serbia. Uh -huh. Four hundred miles long, right? Siberian. Yeah, yeah, Siberian. Siberian. Yeah. When frozen, the curvature should add twenty plus miles. Correct. Um. Well, at four hundred miles long, and what's the obser mm -hmm. observer observer's height? Um, about five thousand feet. Five thousand feet is the observer's height. Yep. In the bottom picture there. No, not there. I'm talking about here. That, that On this, top, this that, is about six feet. That oh, that oh. top one. That top one's not a picture, is it? No, but it was sketched at 5,000 feet. Like, they went up there, and then they sketched it from there. So a person went up and sketched it? Mm. Okay. What was that person's name? <laughs> I, don't no, I don't care. I don't care. I'm just kidding. So, all right. So the bottom one. So then uh, how far are we seeing in that bottom one there? Um, Over here? Yeah, the bottom picture there. How much, how, uh, how far are we seeing? Like, that other side that we're looking at, how far away is that? Like, from here to here, or from, yeah, here from here? the observer to whatever we're seeing on the other side of that that meme. <laughs> it's not a meme, but uh, as you can see from over here to over here, um, it's about like if I had a, a rough prediction, probably around uh, a thousand feet. A thousand feet. I so. Okay. Yeah, I, totally it looks to, me, so, it's, looks to me like it's more than that but okay yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> at, at, a, at a thousand feet we're talking about what a quarter of an inch of curvature oh, less a than that a, uh, a half mile um i think it's at a at a 
Ephraim. Never mind. I'm not going to quote any numbers, but uh, no, that's not much. Um, so, so I mean, this is this is a bad poem here. Yeah. By the way, just, uh, <laughs> by the way, Jaden, just just a bit of trivia. Lake Baikal contains something like one third of all the Earth's fresh water. Okay. Uh, amazing. Just a bit of trivia there. Yeah, yeah it is. That's, it's huge. That's quite it's huge. Quite quite amazing. Do you have more uh, unrefutable evidence in meme form? Yeah, I actually do. Okay. okay. All right. You find it right here. Uh, yep. More irrefutable so evidence. I I actually have uh, a um. I have a program I wrote. Hmm. That calculates the amount of curve in a. Uh, over a distance. Okay, so let's see here. Um, I'll read it for you since your mom isn't here. Over a distance of 296 miles, the Earth should curve over 58,000 feet. And then and then um, this meme is is uh, been copied a few times and the quality is bad. The Trans-Australian Railway crosses the the Null, Null Arbor Plain of Australia from Port Augusta in South Australia to... Uh, Calgarite in Western Australia. It includes 40, 478 kilometers stretch of dead straight track, the world's longest between 797 kilometers. The next line is blocked. So, okay. Anyway, um, says so that's over 11 miles of curvature. Where does this curvature take place? So, so this, this little article, is that the measurement that you're trying to say is a, um, a measurement or, or, a or what? Walk, walk, um, us, walk us through that. Okay, so uh, I'm going to paraphrase it, right? And then throw you the point. Um, over 296 miles, right? Uh, according to flat or low Earth, lower knowledge, the Earth should have curved over 58,000 feet, right? And this on the right side is just telling you how long the railway is, correct? And 478 kilometer stretch of dead straight track the world's longest between the 797 kilometer and its length, right? That's over 11 miles of curve. Now, where does this curvature take place? New slash, it doesn't because the Earth is flat. So, so I mean, what, what you did not provide is any evidence of flatness. So if you'll notice the part that you that's highlighted there by the meme maker says dead straight. It doesn't say dead flat it says straight that means it doesn't cur it doesn't turn left or right that's what dead straight means which of course is also not the case there there are slight variations in it anyway so so um and uh so there's no actual evidence there there's no measurements but good job memeing there so all right you got another one for us oh here yeah, i got another one just a second here the um let's see 478 kilometers there's 4.3 degrees of curve. So, all right. Jalen, Jalen, who, who, uh, who, who else do you know? How did you find yourself in here? Oh, well, I was just searching on YouTube, looking for some glow birthers to, uh, bury. Uh, okay. And, um, Got it. I saw that McToon was live. So I was like, might as well join his stream, you know? Sweet. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. You got, you got some more memes. Oh, the memes are coming. Oh, no, we don't do that. You're going to have to change what? that one. We don't disparage the dead. All right. That's not appropriate. But yeah, I don't, yeah. Regardless I mean, we, of your age, that's not we, appropriate. We, we can joke about stuff, but the joking ends when you when you make that particular claim. I think people know I won't I won't say it. Yeah, and we could we could yeah. talk about whether whether uh, MC tune is better looking than his dog or not. But yeah, I'll go. it goes to the dog. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> oh god yeah mm -hmm. then there's me my cats all 11 of them are better looking than me so this is a picture of uh, a real old picture this one was sketched um also they're not dead by the way the people that i showed you they're not dead okay no no, so no stop it dead. stop it they don't don't talk like that they they really died people went to their funerals you know people mourned their their passing so the flurfing is funny but when they do that that's sick. Yeah, that's... So, all right. So, so what about what about this uh, this map here? Can you can you zoom it in or something? It's a little small. Um, 
let me see. I don't think I can zoom it in, but this is this is just um so, so you're this in a, is a flat earth model right here. Are you in a web browser? Yeah, I'm in a web browser. Yeah, are you on Windows? Mm-hmm. What's that? Yeah. Okay. So what you do is you hold down the control key, you know that it's in the bottom corner of the keyboard. It's C T R L. Mm -hmm. Okay, yep. and then and the top right next to the backspace is the plus. Try try hitting both of those at the same time. First the control, then hit plus, then let up on on the plus, then let up on control. See if that works. Are you pulling me or not? No, no, he's serious. Okay, give, give it a shot. See, see if you yeah. see if you... There you go. <gasps> Look at that. God, that was Hercules. Hercules. Yeah, there you go. Is this good? Yeah. Better. Yeah, it looks yep, like this there's... is a yeah, this is a flat earth model that has yet to be debunked and it's actually been around for hundreds of years it has to first be bunked it has a i can't i can't debunk what has not yet been bunked <laughs> it, well it's always been true so it doesn't need to be bunked it's always been true you mean like debunked. two plus two equals four like debunked. What? yeah so yeah. so what what's that turd thing at the top <laughs> the turd thing at the top yeah it's in the pacific ocean there uh right where I don't know. That that's about where Hawaii would start, but then it has this big smear going down uh towards I don't know where that is. You're pulling, huh? Are and you then, pulling? And yeah, so that part there that you're looking at. And then over to the right of it is that jaggedy with that was that red uh fjords around it? What what's that part? Fjords? Yes, fjords. Um see this is a country and this is also a country. Yeah, what what are the names of those countries and who lives there and can we go fly to them? This is North America and this is Iceland. This <laughs> Quoth the Raven. Uh okay. Any any other memes? Yep, I got some more irrefutable evidence for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, good news, Jalen, is it's just as irrefutable as all the other actual flurfs that are, have been on here. See my screen? Oh yeah, that's that's a lovely one. Yep. <laughs> yep. I debunk this, buddy. You yep. can't look. Yeah. This is Europe. This Pretty is Asia. Easy, yeah. This is Africa. This yeah, has that's... been true since the 1500s. And, and I love the uh, the lower left corner. It says Merca. Yep. Merca. That's all you need. Merca. I think there's so... an a. I think there's an a there, isn't there? To the left, just is cut off. No, 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 no. It just okay. says Merca. All right. That's so all you need. yeah, th this is actually a very old sketch of yeah, the world, okay. and it's actually older than the globe Earth model. Sure, sure. So okay. this is when people like went over the world and they discovered it, and they actually built things and like found new lands, and this is what they sketched to the world. Got and the, so that, you, and the sea coasts are this uh, incredibly smooth. I've never yeah. seen oh, a yeah. smooth it's, sea coast. It's perfect. It's perfect. Yeah. All right, you got another meme. I mean. Yeah, all right. so we're running. There, there's we running there's mermaids. This? There's mermaids in on uh, on that earth apparently. Yeah, mermaids are real, buddy. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Good job. And all of these these URLs yeah, are yeah. are Discord links. So he's he's been uh, he's been trolling yeah. through some uh, some flat Earth yeah, Discord Jayden, servers. Yeah, Jaden, you're adorable. I've been I've it's been researching, J buddy. Jalen, Jalen, <laughs> it's Jalen. It, I'm sorry, isn't that what I said? Sorry, Jalen. Yeah. Yeah, Jalen. Yeah, Jalen, you're adorable. You really are. You, yep. You, you're cute. All dude. Right. Not as cute as me, but you're cute, dude. Right? <laughs> yep. All right. And any uh all right. Top top, man. Let's go. Yeah, let's I'm gonna the... debunk the moon landing right now. Oh, sweet. Can't wait. Yep. Me too. So, Jalen, you're 16. You're in geometry this year? You take yep. geometry? Yeah, good. Good. Keep studying. What, uh, what, uh, what is your most recent topic in geometry? I don't know. I don't pay attention in that class. I believe you. Yeah, you need to pay attention. By the way, I, yeah, nobody, I, I, I don't have, I don't have you guys on screen. Uh, oh, Wesley. so oh, nobody oh. nobody saw your Whataburger cup. Oh, okay. Except for me and Jalen. So, oh, all right, okay. Jalen, Jalen, here's a geometry question for you. You ready? Mm -hmm. Fo focus up on this one. Focus up. Look, look, look at the screen. Look at the screen. Yep. All right. If you have a if you have a triangle with sides one, one, and one, what are the internal angles? 
Don't know. Oh, come on. I Come believe on. Uh, all Morning, right. maybe. So, 90 degrees. so, 90 degrees, maybe. so, all right. So now let, let's say, uh, let's say you, you have five and you divide by zero. What's the answer? You're five and hit zero. Wrong here. Yeah. All right. Uh, man, you're not doing well. You have five and you divide by zero. That's zero. No. And what is it? Undefined. Undefined. Und undefined. Here, I, can, I can explain it to you like this. Let's say let's say Cookie Monster has five cookies. Right? And <laughs> and let's say that he has uh he has two friends come over and he's like, Hey, I'm gonna share my five cookies with you two. Each of them gets two and a half cookies. Right? Now now let's say the next day they're like, Hey, those were good cookies. Let's, let's invite some friends. So then the next day, five people come over and Cookie Monster says, hey, I'm going to evenly distribute all five of these by the five of you here. It's five divided by five. Everybody gets one. But they were tainted and everybody got salmonella and E. coli and they're sitting on the toilet all day for the next three days. So they don't come over the next day. And so Cookie Monster has five cookies <laughs> and zero people to share them with. And so if you divide it evenly amongst all of Cookie Monster's friends there, how much does each of his friends get? Um there are no friends Manila. to there are no friends to give them to. Undefined. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So I of course and, and to show the you. ivory, the ivory, yes, of course. This is hypothetical. Cookie Monster does not share cookies. Yeah, okay. Me either, yeah. So. All right. Look on my screen. Oh, look, he was on Reddit. Yeah, okay. Yep. Good job. So yes, this Mongo, is, yeah. yeah, this is the x-ray, right? Um, This is the x-ray of oh, the, cool. this is the suit that went to the moon, right? I and call this and suit. exactly why is, um, yeah, why is Neil Armstrong not in it? Where, where are <laughs> Neil Armstrong's bones? Right? I don't know. Probably because he's right. not in the suit right now or in this picture. Oh, yeah. okay. But um, basically, an X-ray machine uses ionizing radiation, right, to see through it. What what kind so, of radiation yeah. does uh, does uh, X-rays use? Ionizing. What we have, but what kind of radiation? What what are the particles made of? Um, protons. Nope. X-rays. Try again. <laughs> try again. Electrons. Well, try again. Gamma, well, gamma. One more time. There, no, well, gamma. gamma is another another band of the same, the same spectrum. So, so I'm asking you, what particle? What particle is X rays and gamma rays? Um, let me think. Kind of getting off topic. I think you're pulling right now, but yeah. Um, this electrons. Is, you already guessed electrons incorrectly. No. So, and you already guessed protons. So, don't try that one again. Neutrons. Nah, good, good guess. Good guess. Not neutron. So there's there's really just one more that's pretty common that that you're probably gonna probably gonna know. So what what's I, the what is I it? guess X rays. <laughs> well, he already said X rays. Good job. Good job, oh, Leslie. Okay. <laughs> uh, all right, I'll, I'll give you. All right, I'll I'll let you. I'll let you have it here. The answer is photons. Yep. X rays, gamma rays, light, visible light, radio waves. They're all photons. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead with your okay your thing here. So. Now, um, the ionizing radiation going through the suit, right? Yeah. Meaning that radiation can go through the suit. So if this is what they took up to space, yeah. then Neil Armstrong would have gotten cancer by now. He would have gotten, he would have been dead to radiation. Uh, why? Because the radiation, right? You can see in the x-ray right here, the radiation is going through the suit. I mean, okay. The suit's not deflecting it. So okay, if he but, was wearing the suit in space, uh, the radiation but, but, would be going through him. Are you talking about when they mm. went through the Van Halen belts? I'm talking about when they landed on the moon. Yeah, oh, well, Supposedly. What, what kind of radiation is on the moon then? No, it's the radiation coming from the sun. Yeah, what, what, what kind of radiation is coming from the sun uh, at the moon? Um, there's... There's ionizing radiation, and that's the one that I'm talking about right now. Yeah, well, ionizing is a broad term. There's multiple kinds of radiation that's ionizing. So be more specific than just ionizing radiation. Um, be more specific like gamma? Uh, well, if, you know, what what particle would it be that you're talking about again? So gamma, gamma, 
gamma and x-ray are photons yes yes okay and would wouldn't he have gotten cancer by now solar uh, radiation well, electrons well, well electrons are not uh photons right yes good job good no, job this. so what <laughs> again you don't seem to quite know enough about radiation to to try to broach this topic here uh Jalen so <clears throat> I'll just I'll just I'll, uh, I'll I'll educate you and, and give a little education to the audience at the same time. So the Van Halen belts are uh, uh, definitely ionizing radiation, but they're not gamma rays. They're not X rays. They're not photons. The the, uh, the uh, Van Halen radiation belts are alpha particles and beta particles, and alpha radiation, beta radiation. Um, so alpha particles is the uh, the the uh, nucleus of a helium um atom so it's two protons and two neutrons it's positively charged and it can easily be blocked with a sheet of paper you don't you don't take uh so you, this, this is an x-ray that's on screen you could not do the same thing with uh alpha radiation but alpha radiation is bad news but you can block it easily beta radiation is electrons one of your other <laughs> guesses radiation. so so good good job so beta gate radiation is electrons again that's pretty easy to block with uh, a thin sheet of aluminum, for example. So those are the two things that are did, in the Did Van they Halen. have it, though? Did, did they, they have, have a thin sheet of aluminum in their suits? No. No, 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 they, not in their suit. When they went through the Van Halen radiation belts, that's around the Earth. So they were inside the, uh, the, the ship at the time, which happens to have been made out of metal. So it blocked that pretty easily. So <clears throat> anyway, then now uh, when they're on the moon... Um, there, there was certainly there would have been a higher amount of of gamma and X rays than on Earth because they don't have the uh, ozone layer to uh, to absorb some of that. So they they would have had that, but the suits would have blocked some of that as well. But it wasn't a significant amount. Yeah. So, are you going right now? So it's not yeah. no. So it's it's uh, not that. <laughs> Coordinate oh. zero. Coordinate zero is trying to correct me on Van Allen belts. He says it's Van Allen belts, not Van Halen. <laughs> Amateur. <laughs> Funny, yeah, I guess it's probably. Funny. Yeah, probably. I haven't done the numbers, but probably uh, ultraviolet was a bigger problem for them because yes. the ultraviolet on the moon is pretty radical. Yes, but but the suits would have blocked that very well. Oh, oh yes, oh, yeah, yes. And, and, their and, they, and their visors. Their yeah. visors were down. So yeah, yeah. Big tune. Where did you meet this? Where did you meet Les Roher? Les Ro it's Les R Leslie Rohrer. It's an H, not a V. Uh, um, he just one day he 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 was here. One day he was he not, was here. and then the next day he was. And uh, we've been trying to get rid of him. Ever I'm kidding. <laughs> no, we've been trying to get rid of me. I know everybody does. You know, I'm just like a straight puppy. You know, I just wander right. in. And, All right, yeah. And you fed me, and, and, and that was your yeah. And he usually does not pee on the floor, so that's good. <laughs> So, all right. Um, anything else there? Uh, you got some more woke evidence? Yeah, I actually do. I have some more evidence, yeah. Uh, okay. Let's see here. Can I... Uh, can I... Let's see. You, could you... You want to just turn off your camera? No, nah, I'll keep it on. <laughs> all right. All right. Yeah, Jalen, Jalen, I got I to gotta give you some props there. That last one was... Actually, some evidence. It wasn't quite right, but it, yeah. it was actually yeah. evidence. Yeah. yeah, it was a good question. Uh, yeah. All right, so walk us through this one. Okay, so can we agree that the core of the Earth is ten thousand eight hundred degrees Fahrenheit? Going to um, that. The, well, we're we're off to a bad start here. Um, because what do you mean? Well, because it should be in Celsius. But it's translated into Fahrenheit. Can we agree on this though? Can we agree on this? Um, I don't know. It, it, it's it's uh, it's maybe it's in the right range, sir. Sure. sure. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now, ten thousand degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah. Would melt through the entire Earth, including this. Would it? So if this is ten thousand and this is three thousand, then oh. how is this fifty-seven? It doesn't make sense. Oh. This doesn't work on the globe Earth model because globe Earth is oh. It's are fake. you are you familiar with um, insulating materials and the uh, 
Is that does that does that ring a bell? Yep. No. Somewhat. No. Yeah. No. No. Yeah. Uh, anyway, um, it's it. There's. Let's just do this. It's a long way from the middle to the outside, and there's a whole bunch of stuff in the way, and that stuff in the way uh, needs to get hot, but it doesn't. It 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 moves the heat. You know, it doesn't go like instantly. So the stuff that's on the surface cools off a bit. There you go. Is know. that your answer to this? I'm that's I'm talking. Yeah, I'm talking to you like you're five. So, but it still it still doesn't work though. You have three thousand degrees Fahrenheit. How would that not burn this? Well, it, well have good. you ever seen a volcano? <laughs> yeah, I have. There you go. I mean, how, how but did a volcano that... is in three thousand degrees? Uh, oh, it's oh. not. <laughs> It is, yes. Oh, apparently, that, yeah. apparently volca- how, how, how hot is the lava coming out of a volcano then? Don't know. Never been there. Good job. Okay. I'm just saying, mm-hmm. like, on your globe Earth model, this doesn't make any logical sense. Mm-hmm. All right. Like, the drop-off. Do, do, do you got any, uh, you got any uh, other uh, woke, woke memes? I do, man, since you, you don't want to face the truth. Look up. Look, yeah, Jalen, look up look up Newton's law of cooling, okay? and then apply it to a to a. Oh, a, uh, he didn't pay attention in that class. <laughs> All right. And next time, do temperatures in Rankin, please. Hmm. Yeah. T- does he? Is there, a, is there a sheet unit for for uh, temperature? See my screen right now, buddy. Uh, all right, let me put it up here. The skillet represents Earth's crust, and the fire represents the mantle. <laughs> what would happen to the water on the crust? But it, but that uh, that skillet is is conducts a heat a little better than the the uh, crust of the Earth does. So says who? Says who? Oh gosh. Um. No. I. Uh, you know, is is Grover that told me that? <laughs> See, you, this is this is hard logic. You can't really beat Gro- Grover the Muppet. Yeah, Grover. It, yeah. The crust has iron, just like I, the skillet. It's the same after, material. After yeah. cookie, after Cookie Monster came by, Grover yeah, oh. told me that. Yeah. All right, is that it? This is cute. This is cute. Yeah. All can right. you de- can you try and debunk this? Uh, yeah, it's called in, in the insulative insulative materials. That are not just pure iron. They don't have yeah. uh, the same type of heat conductivity that iron does. There you go. What materials would that be? Uh, well, the crust is not made up of uh, pure iron. So I, 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 have you been outside? Yep. Okay. And so when you look down, do you see pure iron? Mm, maybe. Maybe. Where do you live? No, don't tell me where you live. Um. Everywhere I've ever been, and Leslie, maybe you can back me up on this. When you walk around outside and you look down, you don't see pure iron. But it's like Minecraft. So. You have to dig down. And there's also other elements that conduct the heat better. Okay. I'll get out my, my Minecraft pick and start yeah. working it. There you go. Yeah. All right. Pretty smart, uh, smart idea. I, yeah, right. I wish. Yeah. All right. All right you I'd got. Be, uh, I, I want to be there because I'd be rich. I mean, if iron ore is right on the surface, boy. <laughs> yeah all right was it about ten thousand dollars a ton or better you know i don't know i've i've been to the uh the northern parts of minnesota where the uh iron range is and seen some of the, the different things up there like in two harbors two harbors minnesota used to be a, a very busy port for shipping out iron across the great lakes so um they the they still do some, but it's not nearly as much taconite as they used to do. Yeah. So it's cool with to go a, there and see them load it up and Yeah, with a load mm. of iron ore, twenty six thousand tons more. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. All right. Oh, all right. Here we go. Another one. Yep. All right. Now this is probably the best argument, right? No po here. All right. Um as you can see, right, here is the supposed earth, right? Here's the earth right here. You agree that this is the Earth? It looks to me like this is a. Um, no, that is not. Oh yeah, that's from that's from the Dis- uh, Discover satellite. There you go. Okay. All right. So, would you agree this is the Earth? 
Is that moonshine you're drinking? Is that toonshine? <laughs> toonshine. Toon yeah, toonshine. Toon, oh, toonshine, okay. <laughs> but as you can see here, um, the earth is, it's, uh, my notes here. Uh, it's gas pressure. Can we agree that this is gas pressure? How can the gas pressure exist next to a vacuum chamber? It doesn't make sense. A vacuum chamber, huh? Vacuum chamber. Yeah, yeah. space like is a that. vacuum chamber, and this is gas well, what pressure. Is, so how what is, is the what is the pressure of space? I don't know. You don't. I've never been there. Never been there. So the pre yeah, super <laughs> good 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 what? point there. So the pressure yeah. of space is positive. Pressure of uh on the surface of the Earth is positive. And there is just a, a variation between uh, high pressure area and low pressure area. Similar to uh, if you've ever watched a, a, a map of, of uh, the you know United States showing the weather coming up. And they'll have a little H and a little L in different spots. That's a high pressure area and a low pressure area. So that is pressure, uh, high pressure area next to a low pressure area without a physical container. Amazing how they did that. Yeah. Yeah. All so right. what do you mean? How can the how can the gas pressure exist next to the vacuum chamber? Because it would all just float it, out. It doesn't. It's not a, a vacuum chamber. So there yeah. you go. Yeah, Space isn't a vacuum it. chamber. No, it's not a vacuum chamber. It's not a it's chamber. Not. Yeah. No. So you've been there before. You've been in space and seen yeah, it's not a vacuum just, chamber. I was just there last night. Neil deGrasse Tyson and I were hanging out. Um, <laughs> they wouldn't let me did, come. We did. Yeah, we're doing. We were doing a little uh, a little kung fu training up there. It's pretty huh. cool. It's cool in zero G. Yeah, you should give it a shot yeah. sometime. Yeah. Kung Fu training. Yeah. I want yeah, I wanted to come uh, go with them, but they wouldn't let me go. They, all right. they don't like me. All right, all right. Walk us through this one here. Uh yes, I will. All is, right. So this is potastic. deepest hole potastic. Yeah, yep. yeah, deepest yeah, hole ever dug. Right. Let's see all uh, the Mount Everest, Burj Khalifa. Mariana Trench, right? And the deepest hole ever dug. <laughs> Cola Super Roe Borehole, right? Now, it's only 7.6 miles deep, 12 kilometers deep, and the crust is 50 kilometers deep. Mm -hmm. So how do they know on God's green earth, right? God's green flat earth, right? How would they know if they haven't even passed the crust? How would they know that there's a mantle, the outer, and the core beneath it? How would they know that? They don't. Hmm. Yeah, we do. <laughs> How? <clears throat> Go ahead, Leslie. Sure. Uh, well, my my uh, question would be: uh, Do you think that we can only tell what something is by looking at it? That's a two cool quay fallacy, though. No, uh, you can tell what things are without looking at them. I mean, have you ever seen a sonogram? I have. Oh, I've had I've, a sonogram. Have you ever seen a sonogram? I've had some. Not because I was yeah. pregnant, too. <laughs> uh, yeah, you can you can see my organs with uh, with uh, sound. Yes, but have they ever x-rayed the Earth? It's not. It, he, he wasn't talking about x-rays. Yeah, I was talking about sound, and and uh, I, like, oh. my my, like my brother did. All all they did was have these big trucks, great big trucks that jumped up and literally jumped up and down, created seismic waves, and they would measure then the the seismic waves to find oil, and they did find oil. But how would you know what's how would you know that there's the outer and the core if you've never been down there before? Because the sound waves reflect differently off of different density layers and also different temperature layers. Because just like in any medium, you know, uh, with light, let's say, uh, the They're different densities are the different densities have different velocities of propagation for all right. Sound. All right. All right, you, you you're getting a little too fancy for him. Let me let me try this. Yeah. Let me try this uh, this angle. There you all go. right, all right. Here we go, Jalen. When a man mm. and a woman love each other very very much, and they get married, and then they do things that I'm not going to explain to you. You're going to have to ask your mom. Go upstairs when she's not busy with her sex friend. Anyway, so then then that mommy gets pregnant, and inside the mommy's tummy is a baby, and then they go to the hospital, and then they take a. Uh, sound wave thing and they rub it over mommy's tummy and they get pictures of the baby inside and they can find out whether it's a boy baby or a girl baby without cutting mommy open it's amazing it's similar to that you forgot, mm, okay. you, you, thought about the, 
You forgot about the participation of the postman in this whole thing. Ah, the postman. <laughs> I, that's a sore subject for Jalen, I think. <laughs> Requiem for a Dreams is sex friend. Just call him a trick. All right, I have two. I have two last pieces of evidence. Okay. Oh, I can't wait. Yep. All right. Look right here. You can see there's no refraction on the bottom right here. All right, just a second. There we go. Okay, got it. Proof of flat Earth. Uh, how did you pr measure that there's no refraction on the bottom? You can't see it on the bottom picture. How, how did you know oh, there's no refraction? Yeah. Because you can see the city in the distance. Yeah, but, but that, that doesn't that doesn't mean that there's no refraction. So I just want to know how. Do you know what refraction is? I do. Yeah, yeah. What is refraction then? Refraction it is, seems is like... yeah, it's it's a implementation of Snell's law, where light bends uh, toward the normal as it enters different mediums. It's not wavy. Oh, but but it doesn't mean that it's not wavy. That has nothing. To, that's not, <laughs> Where do you that's see the waves? The, that's not. Where do you the, see the waves? That's not the measure of whether or not the refraction is happening. You didn't know that. I mean, you can see, you can see that the um, the, refra the refraction is wavy, right? Uh, the top is wavy, but the bottom isn't wavy. So that means the refraction is false, and flat Earth is true. So wavy at. Wavy doesn't mean refraction. You can you can have refraction without it being wavy. I don't know if you realize this, but your eyeballs refract. Do you know that? Mm. Yeah, they do. Um, and yet somehow that's not wavy. In fact, uh, a magnifying glass refracts and a camera lens refracts. Have you ever used a camera? Um, I think I have, yeah. Yeah, yeah, like on your phone, right? There you go. All right. <laughs> PhD Tony comes in to, I think this is referring to your, uh, your previous meme showing the, the heat where I said the heat transfer is, is an issue. PhD Tony says geothermal heat flux at the surface is 65 uh, milliwatts per square meter for a total of 44 terawatts. There you okay. go. Do with that as you will. Are you are you an atheist, Mictoon? I am not. Leslie you're not, is. Are you, Leslie, you're an atheist. If you want to call me that, go ahead. Thank. So, Leslie, where do you think we go after we die, Leslie? Uh, well, I know that my relatives are all going to toss me into the trash can and out back. <laughs> They might, they might find an appropriate hole and check you in it. Come on. Yeah, I don't know. They wouldn't bother to cover me over. Um, you know, I think even in Texas, there's rules about that. Yeah, you know. But we got land way up in the hill country where nobody would see. Uh, Jalen, I mean, the, the the true answer here is, you know, no one knows, really, right? I mean, that's the real answer. No one really knows. I can't tell you. Mm, okay okay so there you um, go well, where's, this, a, where's this line of reasoning going here Jalen? oh I, I was just wondering like why why would you want to be an atheist i, I don't i don't know if anybody really comes into their uh decisions about yeah uh, about spiritual uh, matters by pre-selecting no. where they want to uh what they want to do i think i think they they figure it out because that's that's the conclusion they've been brought to by the their uh, their line yeah. of reasoning. When my when my mother died, I would have given anything anything uh, that I had to to be able to believe that she was still somewhere. Uh, desperately, I would like to believe that, but I can't. Wait, so can you prove that atheism is real? Can you prove that or no? That it is real. Uh, mm. Uh, are there atheists? Uh, I, well, yeah, yeah. I mean, I we think know that that's are... we know that's not what he meant. I well, I don't know. Well, I mean, answer I, what he. Yeah. We can answer what he meant, right? Can, uh, he's his question. Let me rephrase his question to you because it's yeah. malformed. Do you do you uh, how, can you prove that atheism is correct? Well, of course not. No. There you go. Uh, and then yeah. and then ask him back the same question. 
can you prove that 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 yeah can you prove that uh any particular religion or just religion in general is correct yeah objectively um no you'd have to have some bit of faith yeah. but atheists have faith right they have way more faith than christians because they believe something exploded 14 billion years ago and it all just came no. from nothing that's not what they believe at all no and i yeah. mean that's the most popular theory so i'm just no. going off of that none of them say that nothing exploded that's not the okay plan. you know you know what i so, meant, you so, know what I meant. well no and this one i'm not going to give you that leeway jalen um mm -hmm. People, the the Big Bang uh, theory is not nothing exploded and then uh, something came out of it. The the Big Bang theory is we're not certain what was there before, but we are, it only goes back a certain time. To be yeah. specific, um, the uh, Judaic uh, religions are the ones that claim that there was first nothing and then something happened. So that's the actual one that that makes that claim. Um, the Big Bang doesn't make any claim of any knowledge before a certain time period. Yeah, that's a that's a flair for argument. That's a well, we just don't know. That's a flair for argument. It's a flair for you. No, 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 no. It's honesty. It's honest to say well, that I don't it, know. I, you know. I think yeah, I think it's fair to say we uh, don't know. But the difference here is that 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 flurfs provide nothing f ever. There's never anything. Right. And so mm. different different times that they're asked something, they'll say, I don't know. And other times they'll they'll do some they'll give some other answer when you. But you compare that to the globe that does definitely know and have a lot of evidence for it. For example, some flat earthers, when asked, what is the sun? They'll say they don't know. OK, I believe that they don't know because they're that stupid. But for the globe, we do know. We, we know what's happening in it. And we can provide evidence-based um, information that's that's not just guesses, that's actually confirmed through empirical research about what is inside the sun and how it's happening. Yeah. And, mm. and it's, a very, it's a very different thing, too, to try and answer questions of what happened, you know, way, 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 way back when, however far back when it may be, and what we see today, right? Well, don't you think atheism just leads to nihilism and hedonism? Because you don't have any morals, pretty much. It's not based off. Of that's anything. not true. That's not so. No, so I, 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 I that's not true. Morals. J Jalen, the the atheists I know, and those that are, you know, that go underneath the umbrella of atheism, um, right? With people play semantic games, but I, you know, we kind of we kind of know what what you mean by that. Um, they're not generally nihilists, so I don't think that's correct at all. It leads and to I, it, though. No, and I, but, I but, certainly have. But there aren't. Oh, sorry, there aren't. If it leads to it, that means there's a pipeline, and there's got to be a whole bunch of nihilists shooting out the other end. But there aren't. There are. It, anyone that's... who's, if you're an atheist, right? I'm telling this to all the McToon fans, right? If you're an atheist and you're not a nihilist or a hedonist, you're lying to yourself because that's what it leads to. <laughs> not met, I've not met. I don't know if I can name any that I've met that are that. Yeah, I'm not so. Well, I, I'm. I think I'm a sybarite, probably. I enjoy my comfort, but uh, you know, I I have plenty of morals. I understand what morals are, and they don't have to derive from some notion of God at it all. Does. No, and they is don't can't come from an ought. And is can't come from an ought. That's a fallacy. You can't and make an is out what? of an ought. You can't, you can't make, make an, an is out of an ought. Uh, Did you get that from Kent? I don't know who that is. I'm well, just saying. Fun. I'm just saying, if you don't have a, um, if you don't have like, for example, if I were to ask you, how do you know something is good or objectively good? There are no like objective goods. Like, why shouldn't I steal yep. from you? You know what I mean? You wouldn't be able to answer because, that because I could just keep well, on going for it. Be, well, <laughs> because I don't want you to steal from me means that. That's objective. I can't, of course, it's subjective. Because, yeah, there's no objective truth in atheism. Well, okay. I mean, I don't know that that necessarily follows, but okay, that's fine. We can have subjective truths. We can have laws. Don't yeah, I'm just us. saying there, there's and, no and, there's no grounding and, in atheism. Yeah. Anyway, um, th this this uh, this got way off track. Did you did you have one more? Um, yeah, uh, yeah, stupid, yeah, stupid I, meme. I, I mean, woke meme to uh, <laughs> to uh, undeniably prove. Uh, that flat earthers are wrong about everything. 
Yeah, I, I did, but it's it's more of a question on your beliefs, right? So right, yeah, let, let's let's see let's see the derpy meme. Derpy meme. Derp 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 derp. <laughs> All right, uh, McToon, <laughs> what's your opinion on these two people? I have Flatter Day Saints and then Ross, and then you uh, can see opinion in the bottom. Ah, uh, okay. So Flatter Day Saints is a poo poo head, and <laughs> oh, and, your language. Yep, and Ross. Ross is an in interrupting guy that that lacks the ability to not interrupt, but he's uh, generally a, an okay guy. Did they? Did they? Didn't they accuse you of something? I was watching the um. Oh, Ross! Ross, debate Ross did not. Ross. Day. Ross was very, uh, very uh, appropriate on that particular topic. Flatterday Saints was very inappropriate, um, and it it yeah, really so. shows Flatterday Saints has severe mental issues that um so what happened is is uh, i had played a video where there's a, a kid in a garage that was helping his dad do a science experiment and flatter day saints is so incredibly sick in the head that rather than seeing a kid doing an experiment with his his dad he saw a kid that was shackled to something in a basement and then um he accused me of being involved in that somehow so that's that's how that's he's a, that's how he's a poo poo head, but uh, it it shows that that his mind is in a very sick sick place. That he he would see just a kid sitting yeah. sitting there doing a science experiment with his dad. I suspect Flatter Day Saints probably had some pretty rough experiences with his own father, maybe um, abandonment or something like that. Some some pretty bad psychology going on there. Yeah. Um, and then and then another guy was going to debate made the same exact accusa accusation. Ross was there when that accusation was made and Ross backed me um after the fact and said, "Yeah, that was that was out out of the out, uh, inappropriate and uh, unacceptable mm -hmm. for him to say that." Why, so Why does yeah, Ross was, have a black eye? <laughs> no, I was I try to make his eye. Yeah, I was just uh, wondering cuz when I, when I watched the debate, right? Not normally on Flatter Day, right? Not really Flatter Day, but when I watched the Ross debate, he said, he said, yeah, man, I watched the video and it's some pretty, it's some Pizzagate type stuff. And then when he said no, that, he started like him. cursing him. Yeah, that's, and, and yeah, MC Tune, from what I observed, dearly loves his children and is very, very sensitive on that topic. Don't blame him a bit. I don't have children, so I'm not quite as sensitive, but nonetheless, it's a rawly, terrible thing to say about anyone without evidence it's it, it's unacceptable just plain and, unacceptable. and and to even bring up that that uh, that particular gate yeah. shows that the person has no critical thinking skills and is deeply deprived right yeah because because, a... because that particular gate is ne never existed never did it was it was a ridiculous claim from the beginning and anybody that thinks that it was that it was had any shred of truth to it is a sick person. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. It, yeah. It, it came from it came from people thinking that there was a pizza place in um, somewhere near Boston that that had a basement and in the basement I'm not going to say the details but was yeah. was uh, buying and selling and uh, in, in reality yeah. that place didn't have a basement and uh, <laughs> some. Great. Some guy, some sick, depraved, worthless pile of of uh, walking fecal matter, decided to take up a, a weapon and bring it to the place to try to uh, liberate all of the, uh, the the people that he thought were in the basement that didn't exist. Yeah. Well, turns out the basement didn't exist, and he uh, he got arrested as he should. There you go. So yeah, I, I was yeah I, I, when I saw it. Um... Uh, I was just wondering, right, because of your reaction. And yeah, yeah. Um, also, in your debate against Captain Cook, um, you can see, like, timestamps. Uh, I see, like, deleting comments of people saying, like, weird stuff. Yes. And I was just wondering, yeah. uh, you know. Yep, that was uh, yeah. that was uh, probably uh, a Flatter Day Saints fan or maybe himself in there re asserting the same accusations again a yeah. sick depraved individual walking yeah. pile of fecal matter that should definitely be housed uh, in a uh, a place that has orderlies and uh jackets that that can give you a hug uh, all the time 
Oh, you God. still talk to Flatter Day? Oh no, 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 would not. Would you ever think about like making friends with him or like? No, why? Why would I make friends with him? He need, he belongs in an asylum. That's where mm. he really should be. He should be unless he in, gets some serious help. Yeah, yeah, he needs to be in an asylum. He's not a person to be taken seriously, and any any community that allows him in is has a problem. They need to clean house. And there, mm. there, there, there are definitely some vile, awful people on this earth. MC Tune is not one of them. Okay, Mike is not one of them. Clearly, I mean, it, it shows through across the board. Okay, all yeah. right. I've, I've got. Uh, uh, let's see. Rick Sanchez says, "Does he get confused when his oven is on, but the glass door doesn't get hot?" <laughs> mm. Or, or. If the oven is on and the rest of the house isn't also the same temperature. Yeah, I'd be confused too. Yep. Yes. Uh, obviously you are confused. Uh, liquid <laughs> flames. This is this was this is a that's wonderful. An introspective one here. He says liquid flames says if your holy book tells you how to treat your slaves and other reprehensible things, that book is disqualified as a source for a moral code. Should I dunk on him? Um, nah, no, nah, I'm not gonna don't don't bother. Uh. He's probably he's probably a po. Uh, probably not. But uh, that there are. So I'll, I'll respond to that myself. Liquid flames, of course. There there are. Uh, yeah, that that's not acceptable. So um, why Bro. why is that in there? Um, a bunch of people have have uh, different interpretations of why that's in there, and um, and as I often say. It, there's there's a many many interpretations of it and and uh, nobody's interpretation is necessarily yeah. correct so wait and coming um, from yeah liquid flames um i just so so <laughs> i did uh i did uh, yeah he's he's not yeah nobody's nobody's seeing you yeah yeah all right you you know, labeled an atheist here uh, slavery is, in my opinion, absolutely reprehensible. There are only a couple of things that are worse than slavery. And, and, and they're, they're very specific things that are worse than slavery. Slavery is vile and evil, period, if you ask me. All right. What, All right. what are worse? Jalen, Jalen, um, mm -hmm. do you have any reason to be here still? What, what, uh, what, what is going on? Do you have anything else? Um... Yeah, man, I just want to say, um, uh, shout out. Yeah, all right. I don't think we need to hear. Yeah, we don't need to hear who you're going to shout out. Hey, all right. Thank you. Bye. All right. That I didn't know what he was going to say, so I wasn't about to let it through. Um, so, so am I, am I too young to be shown on screen now, Tim? Uh no, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll adjust the uh, the thing here. But you're you're thirteen. Wait a minute. How's it? You get shown on screen. You're only thirteen. I don't know. Never mind. Uh, <laughs> Time Lord Science. Time Lord Science. Oh, okay. Here, let's see. Got to get this. Got to fix this. Mm -hmm. That yeah, he was. Uh, I didn't know exactly where he was going at first. He certainly had Poe vibes, but then he. Yeah. He went definitely like he had then uh he had some real nasty stuff. So all right. Um <clears throat> he's young. He's he's very young. He's so, he's, yeah. he's young and dumb. Um <laughs> we all were once, yeah. Yeah. All right. If anybody is interested in uh, popping in for a little bit longer, we'll 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 do a a bit more of a uh uh call in show. So let me read this from Burnham's tune. I took the opportunity on the equinox to complete the Eratosthenes experiment and got within 1.5% of the accepted globe circumference value. Thanks for inspiring me and many others. Well, thank you, Burnham. If you want, you could send your measurements to um, a round thinker. He, uh, mm -hmm. he has a spreadsheet of, of yeah. them that he's collected. Um, so, yeah, yeah the, the, uh, the weather didn't cooperate for me, but yeah, it's amazing that just using a plain old ruler, you can come within 
like you said, like a percent and a half or two percent. Yeah. Um. So you are you're very close to the path of totality, right? Uh. Well, I live not right on the edge, but uh, we have okay. some land. We have some land uh, there in the hill country, and I invite anybody who would like to to meet me there. Uh, at uh, at our place, it's just uh, northwest of Lakey, Texas. It's spelled like Leaky, Texas, but it's Lakey, Texas. Yeah, and it's going to be dead center of uh, totality. It's going to have a full four plus minutes of uh, of totality. Well, that's cool. It is, and uh, I just ordered a, a solar filter for my camera. Uh, I'd like to take my telescope. I have a twelve inch Schmidt Cassegrain, Mead Schmidt Cassegrain. But um, I'm rather infirm these days, so I don't know that I'll be able to transport it. But I'd love to, though. Um, I will be in North Texas there, not far from, from the border, actually. And um, I have, if anybody, if, if you don't know, I've, there's probably people that don't know still, but uh, I, I have a uh, on my Discord server a group called the um, e uh, Eclipse 2024. So if you're interested, if you're going to be in North Texas and you'd like to uh, to to see if, if if we can be in the same vicinity while we watch it, you can jo join that group. We're going to do, um, you know, because day of, there's definitely going to be some um, uh, some if you're if you're if you're not there early, some challenges in finding a place to to have your your butt sit to watch the eclipse. Oh. There's going to be a lot of people there, so yeah. Not yeah. Anybody who is a little is a little further south, like about eight hundred miles further south, yeah, is welcome to meet us. And and we have forty acres, plenty of butts can sit there. So, <laughs> and some nice cabins too. Plenty of butt space. Um. Yeah. So I I, I scoped out. I actually was down there a couple of weeks ago. So where I'm going to be, and uh, so like similar like you, my 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 family has land. A little bit mm. of land near Marietta, Texas. Oh yeah, yeah. So yeah. my camper is my camper is currently sitting there. Um, oh, ready to go. Yep. So we left it down there and then drove back. We actually drove from Texas to Minnesota in one day. Um, how how much do you hike. wear our cars, dude? How, how long it was, do your cars last? <laughs> it was a hike. Um, we drove from Minnesota down to Pensacola, basically nonstop on the way down. Um, our longest stop was at Bucky's in Alabama <laughs> and get, get, all right. Did, I don't know if I've said this. So we, we leave, we, so we went, mm -hmm. all right, I'll give you the whole story. When we're going to, to Florida, we were going to go on Friday and then, then it was my, my net, my niece's birthday and she's going to have a birthday party on Saturday. And I'm like, yeah, let's, let's shift back when we go down. Um, by a day so we went to the party and we're gonna we left that night so we left the party at nine or something she's uh in in the the area here and and then we went home we everything was packed up we just we just you know got in the vehicle and started driving well we got about an hour south and my wife's like wait a second i don't know my sunglasses I'm like oh no they're prescription sunglasses um because she can't she, she has to use, uh, um, this is how I drive. Right. But, but she, she needs glasses while she drives. I'm like, Oh, um, uh, so we, we got to turn around. We're, we're an hour South. So pulled over at a, at a rest stop, dropped the trailer there, the parking lot, and then booked it home. Uh, did not find the sunglasses at home just in case drove to my niece's place. Wasn't there went back so we didn't really leave until about 1 30 1 or 1 30 a.m so i drove through the night and then uh my wife took over driving and i slept during the day then we got to bucky's and all was better um anyway so same similar when when we when we drove back from texas we we left Marietta area. We drove north, drove right through the uh, the area of Bogota, Texas, is where the eclipse is going through, and uh, checked a couple spots there. Took some pictures and then kept going. Made it all the way in one night. So, 
uh, Sir Little Wolf says, my dad and I used to drive from Florida, Wisconsin, and it took three days. Yeah, you know, cars are, are cars can just go so much easier than they used to. So, oh, oh, the OG Kenji says, did you ever find the glasses? That would be great to give you the, the rest of that story, wouldn't it? So our, our, um, our, our son comes over because, uh, um, to uh to take care of the the cats and uh his girlfriend found them outside the house right next to the steps which we didn't find at midnight 30 you know so then they fedexed them down to a fedex <laughs> uh in pensacola because <coughs> we, we have no address at the campground so and they they got there so okay what well one time I, I was, uh, I got to tell this one. Now, one time when I was sitting there and bought a, I, I don't really drink at much at all, but I bought a bottle of wine. So I, I needed a, cor uh, a corkscrew and I knew I had at least one. And I searched and searched and searched the entire house for the corkscrew. I couldn't find it. Finally, in a huff, I went down to the store and, and got one, came back home, pulled the cork, opened the drawer, and there was two corkscrews. Nice. Yeah, really. She did not find the cats by the steps. She found the sunglasses, sunglasses by, the steps. by the steps. And then and then FedEx the cat. I mean FedEx the sunglasses. <laughs> you know, so, uh, it's a different story for a different day, but I have received a cat in the mail. That's uh, all I'm gonna say. I've received lots of fish in the mail. Yeah. That's a whole different thing. Yeah. By the way, and everybody here probably has seen your broadcast that you did earlier today. But anybody who has not seen that that brief video that uh, that Mike posted earlier today, go see it. I mean, it it just tears it, it tears flesh to pieces. It tears flat earth just left, right, up, it, and down. I, I I really wanted to make something that was just untouchable. It is, and, uh, and it I is. and I called it. There's the link to it untouchable flat earth destruction and uh and you know i posted it on facebook no flat earthers addressed the topic once i posted oh, it on twitter on x no flat earther addressed the topic once in the comment section gleam is in there he didn't address the topic once so go watch it and you'll see because because it goes to what i was talking about here in the debate, you, you you need to make a prediction, and you compute the consequences. Um, that's the essence of science. Um, you can do simpler things where you don't actually have some sort of computation, like what shape is a benzene molecule, right? Six carbons. What shape is that? Well, that's you, you don't compute a shape. You go test to, for a shape. Um, so and flat earthers yeah. even try to deny that they say well that's not an experiment that's yeah, an they, observation it's like oh. yeah they have no idea okay. okay oh this this is i i totally forgot i was going to start with this but then then i didn't um uh uh emerson biggins says is there anything to this final experiment so this if you're not aware the final experiment uh simon dan and creaky did shorts on it um on uh yesterday and I think, and I, I had seen the video a while ago. Somebody sent it to me. Uh, I just did a community post. So it's been, I think it's two videos on this channel. And there's another one coming out on the 31st on um, Sunday. So is it Sunday? Uh, the 31st. So I think it's even premiering on, yep, on Sunday. So it's, um, the, the latest video has a bunch of experiments that have been done, including D marble on a plane with a stupid level. Um, Wolfie is in it. Uh, the, the, you know, the video of Veritasium and smarter every day did uh, opposite to one in uh, Sydney and one in North America where they had these pools to test for Coriolis that's in there. Um, anyway, then it says it's the final experiment to test the shape of the earth. I got an email today from, from it here. I'll, uh, I'll show you the email. 
So. Well, let me just say, I'm not exactly shaking in my boots. <laughs> yeah. So, so some people say it's got to be a flur. Some people say it's got to be a, a globe. Some people, I, I don't know. So uh, anyway, so here, here's the email that I received. Uh, so I, I'm like, and I was, and, and, and FTFE got one. And then um, Creaky got one, and Dave McKeegan, and I think Dan Simon Dan did, and then uh, and then Craig asked Jaron and said, "Jaron, are you behind this? Because Jaron's planning this experiment in April." Jaron said he's not, um, but I'm like, but but Jaron Jaron did get an email, so it's like a golden ticket. This is like a Willy Wonka golden ticket. Um, so I'm like, okay, cool. I'm 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 in the I'm in the group. Anyway, so it says something about globe earthers and flat earthers are are being invited and that I there's there's more information coming in this video. So I got the golden ticket. Awesome. Whatever whatever it is. Um so if if uh I don't know, if anybody else got it, send send me a screenshot and uh, uh I'll look at see who else got the the golden ticket shifty eyes says and asking around oh, cool yeah because jaron jaron's like it's not it's not him so um yeah anyway yeah so that that was it i asked uh craig craig sent me that's that's the one craig sent me so the the tfe team <laughs> the the final experiment but i read it as the the flat earth team Anyway, yeah, that's, I don't know. That's cool. Uh, Rec Room from Dream says, no ticket for me because I don't make content or appear on anything besides, because I like my privacy. Cap Q 57 says, it's a trap. <laughs> I don't know. Um, we'll, we'll see what they do. Uh, of course, I'm being cautious. Um uh dan the waterman is here dan says i know what he's doing oh you're talking about jaron yeah i know what jaron's doing too jaron's going down to um san diego so jaron lives in not san diego california and he's going to san diego to to um on a certain day when the sun is lined up with san clemente island um, and San Clemente Island, no refraction is too far to, to see at all. And even with moderate refraction, you, you would not see much. It would take pretty strong refraction to see a, a significant portion of it. So if he sees all of it, then that's very conclusive, right, uh, of, uh, of flatness. If he sees none of it, then that's very conclusive, and then it, and if it's in between then it depends how much of it he's seen and and uh how much how much he due diligence he does comparing the silhouette of what's seen to the the uh the actual island i don't know we'll see i'm i'm excited for it i hope that 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 it goes well for him um and i don't dan are you were you gonna be there dan i don't know i know if there's gonna be other people there or not so, all right. Anyway, my go my ahead. question is who's bringing who's bringing blinging who's bringing evidence of any sort? Uh, well, in an experiment, I think the experiment is what outputs the evidence. Okay, we'll see. Right. Uh, Dan the Waterman says seventy three miles going to need a very cool, clear day. Uh <laughs> Sharky says, is Jaron using globe calculations to predict this particular day? Well, of course, that's that's the problem already. Because the angle to the sunset, he is using the globe predicted angle to the sunset, not the flat earth predicted angle to the sunset, which is typically um different. And like a, a broken clock is right twice a day, uh the angle to the sunset will be somewhat correct one day of the year, two days of the year, uh, potentially for using the flat earth angle 
uh, because sometimes it's too far north and sometimes it's too far south. So it's got to swing through from too far north to too far south. And for one day, while it's making that transition, it's going to be there. But it, that depends on the location. Some some locations, the sun will, um, will miss. might anyway, might not work out ever. So, and I think the farther south you go, the bigger problem it's going to be. So let's see. What was the other? Do, do, do. I don't know. Oh, tap is here. Super. Um, <clears throat> yeah, the, the flurfs, I think, almost universally would wish that nothing south of the equator existed at all. Some of them deny that anything south of the equator exists, but yeah. It's I don't think any actually do. I think that's more of a joke. Dan the Waterman mm -hmm. says refracted hidden 2,200 feet, which, which is probably using what's called standard refraction, which standard refraction typically only applies over land on, on, on days that are not super hot. Um, so, so it, it standard refraction is, is a term or a, a number used by, um, surveyors if they're going to estimate the amount of refraction. But even even amongst the, uh, them, they they have a different value of standard for different uh, different groups. The American Meteorological Society uses a a uh, coefficient of refraction of 0.3, and other places use a coefficient of refraction of 0.17. So there, you know, it, it's it's a range. When you don't know the conditions, then then how do you predict the specific um, amount of refraction you're going to have, you can't. So, so typically, then you're going to use a range so that you, you know you, it's going to be somewhere in there. So, um, so yeah. Anyway, I so yeah, that was the other. Okay, I remembered where I was. So the angle to the sunset uh, was was determined using was predicted using globe angles. So already, if that matches. It's it's a falsification of flat Earth because the angle doesn't match flat Earth. It match and it's a confirmation for the globe because the globe angle angle matches. The other is the sunset time, as the video that I just we were just talking about, Leslie. The globe predicts the sunset time to the minute for any location for any day, and there is absolutely zero flat Earth methodology to predict the time at all. If you take the known laws of physics and geometry and apply that to the claims made by flat earthers what time will the sun set the answer is never so they have to provide some other mechanism for making the sunset and then test that hypothesis by making a prediction and then we can test that prediction but uh, none of them will ever do it um so yeah so so the angle of the sunset the time of the sunset um, are, are two things that if, if <laughs> this is the thing, if Jaren's planning works and the sun is there, then it falsifies flat earth in those two things and confirms the globe in those two things right there. So. Isn't that uh, second law of flurf? Second law is all flurf challenges are fake. The first law is that Flurf citations contradict the flurf. So yes, it is the first law. Oh, okay. First law. Sorry. I can never remember. You know, yeah. Newton's laws. Like they're one, two, and three. I can never remember which yeah. is which. I, you know, I... Um yeah, and there's and there's only four flurf laws. The third, then, while we're we're going over it, um the um Crikey. Why am I not remembering the third? I'll jump right to the fourth. The fourth is that every flurf explanation for a, an observation contradicts some other flurf explanation for a, some other observation. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Sometimes in a single paragraph. <laughs> you know? Well, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I can't believe I, 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 I totally spaced on the third law of flurf. Um, there it, oh yeah. It's the dual standard of evidence that they have. 
They're pseudoscientists when evaluating FLIRF evidence. They'll take anything. And they're science deniers when evaluating GLOBE evidence. Yeah. So. So there it is. Oh, somebody's talking about dearth. Chris Hoffman says, Stringer is one, if you just need to advertise to FLIRFs, maybe milk some of that dearth money. <laughs> oh, God. I wish. Um. <clears throat> How how is it that somebody like Dearth can make money off of flat out lies? It's just well amazing. because because he has figured out that his target market mm, yeah. uh, will will buy certain lies that he says. Right, yeah. he, he can he can put up uh, fake pictures of of uh, Ireland and Bulgaria tinted red and claim that NASA posted that. And, and then show the non-tinted version of it and say it's in Bulgaria or he'll get he'll get the Ireland one wrong and say it's in in uh, Canada um <laughs> and he knows well they're he is, close right he you is <laughs> he is completely safe in doing that because his target audience will never check to see if he's right yeah so he can yeah. go all day long he can go for years claiming something yeah. and never once will any flat earther go oh that's on nasa's website let me go find it on nasa's website none of those things are on nasa's website that's how gullible they are it's so easy yeah. to indoctrinate the flurfs they they believe the narrative so it must be true just reasons yeah yeah and and so when when i made that when i identified that um so dearth had said there was a um uh, the the moon rover he had this and then down in the bottom corner the, the not the moon rover the mars rover down in the bottom corner it had a little clip that was actually from the mars rover and then this picture and this picture was a, a, a big hill he said it was in devon island greenland he's so stupid that he can't even figure out what country devon island is in it's in canada he said yeah. it was in greenland the actual picture was really in ireland it was the burren in ireland that's how stupid yeah. he is, right? He never even checked that. And he's like, and this is this is the Mars rover. And you can tell it's the Mars rover because they have a little part of it on the corner. But that was never on NASA's website. I found the video of the person making the faked photo. I posted this and I offered him $10,000 to find the original, uh, the URL to the original uh, picture the one that he said was from NASA on NASA's website ten thousand dollars yeah and got, he did got... not do it and and so this this is it dearth you lied but if you disagree with me you can prove me wrong by just giving me the link to the URL can't do it then you proved that you lied God forbid any of them ever admit they even made a small mistake you know uh, Mike you know, you made an error the other night, and, and I pointed it out. You thanked me for it. Yeah. I mean, that's but, that's called honestly. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I, I had said, I had said, and, and, and I don't know why I said this, because I, I knew, as soon as you said, I'm like, why did I say that? Anyway, I knew that, that you cannot determine the mass of Jupiter by looking at the mass of the sun and the orbital period of Jupiter. Um. You can determine the mass of Jupiter by looking at the orbital period of the moons of Jupiter. Um, yep. And, exactly. Yeah. And that, that'll, that'll give you an idea of the mass of Jupiter. So. Yep. <laughs> but, I mean, you just, you just misspoke, you know. It, it happens. But no flat earther has ever misspoken anything, have they? Yeah. No, they, they, yeah, he, in the video response that he did, he he uh he had he had nothing. He he didn't even try to really defend himself. And in that video, he did another identical lie. He claimed something was from NASA's website that's not from NASA's website. In the same video. That like he he lacks the ability to care to research anything. And he's hundred percent safe. None of his gullible idiot indoctrinated followers will ever check up on him. No, sad, really. 
Uh, so I am talking with Kits Kitsumi Kitsuni Cavalier. I'm talking with Leslie Rohrer, who goes by. Are you just? What are you on here? You're just Leslie, right? On here. On here, yeah, Leslie, I'm, I'm Leslie. Le yeah, I'm Leslie. I'm but, on uh, on the uh, Discord, I'm I'm uh, Sky Hunter sixty nine. Yep, he's uh, hunting for Sky. <laughs> yep. Can't good. find it, you know. Good. Just looking and looking, look, can I never can find it, you know. Good luck. So, uh, the the Canadian space advocate says actually Greenland is part of Denmark. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> hey, so um, oh my gosh, the the video that Dearth did the other day, trying to explain away how a three foot wave. And a six foot observer, how a three foot wave can block more than six, more than three feet of a ship. It's so stupid. I have to do a video on it. It's so incredibly dumb. I, Flat Earth Dave is one of the stupidest humans on the planet for that video. It, yeah, why, why it's he's such an, a moron. It's, it's been, over 50 years since I took geometry, and, and yet I know instantly why that's false from simple geometry. Yeah. It's, yeah. oh my God, it's so stupid. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, <clears throat> um, Ben turned out to be a dud, not even a good po. And, um, I can't. Seriously. Um, <clears throat> but uh, next week, I've got two coming up. Or no, sorry, Thursday. Thursday. I've got one coming up on Thursday with Kevin, or Q-E-V-I-N from Canada. He's uh, Ali G from Wish.com. That's on Jaren's, but FTFE will be doing the, the, the debate, and I'll be doing the after show. So that's where that's where to go for those. Um. The next week, I uh, potentially will be on Modern Day Debate. And people are like, yeah, Modern Day Debate, this, this. Well, how, it, how do you make something better? You, you go there and you participate, right? And you give feedback and you be part of the solution instead of not being there. So I had, uh, I had an issue with Modern Day Debate. James and I had uh, conversations on and off over the last two and a half years. And I said, okay, well, let's, let's give it another try. And it, and it, it worked out. So, um, <clears throat> and, uh, Ryan has been moderating these debates lately instead of James and uh, James has gotten better, definitely gotten better. But Ryan, Ryan is, is, uh, is okay at it too. So. Well, and, and Jaron is, is a decent moderator, you know, uh, it's possible to be a decent moderator, oh, decent person, but when it's still be for yeah, when FDFE debated, David, uh, you know, doesn't understand air pressure, um, who we again debated tonight on Jaren's a couple weeks ago. And <laughs> the, the rules are the rules of the debate. You get 30 minutes. Both sides get 30 minutes. And so it can't be any longer than an hour. Um, <clears throat> hypothetically. But anyway, so at the end, Craig had four minutes that and Dave was completely out of time. Craig's like, your time, Craig. And that was it. He just let it go. So good for him. <laughs> hey, I, if you don't mind, I, I want to interject that, that first, especially ones like flat side, uh seem seem to think for some reason that gases have this these magical properties that they're somehow, you know fundamentally different from liquids and solids you know they aren't folks they aren't <laughs> same rules apply yeah so yeah I'll, I'll i'll the video that i did today was uh, a, a video version of the presentation i did um debating nathan erickson on modern day debate and flat so i had tried to analyze it and i only watched a tiny bit of it so in it, it's the same kind of intro to it where I play the part from um, Richard Feynman about the essence of science. You compute the consequences 
And so I computed the consequences for the globe using geometry. And Flatsoy's response to that was, you, you can't do that. What, what, part of, what part of computing is geometry? Geometry isn't part of computing. He, he, really, he really said that. He really didn't think that, uh, that uh, geometry counted as, as doing computations. That's that's how dumb I um, I I guess I didn't get that memo when I was doing geometry back in you know nineteen seventy four. Okay, yeah. <laughs> is there a fourth Nathan? There is a fourth Nathan. You've got Oakley, Thompson, Robert Thompson. Roberts, and Erickson. Yeah, what is it with Nathans? Like, is it that all Nathans are are flurfs or what? You know, it's a... no. It, there's there's more. There's anyway <laughs> people. Thank you very much for for coming along. Um, Thanks for having me on, Mike. I yeah, appreciate it. Um, if if you are interested in, oh, I for, I did forget one thing. I will be. I know I said it. I did a video on it. I'm going to be speaking in Colorado. If you saw Will Duffy's debate with uh, Witsit, where he had Witsit yeah. uh, sweating. Uh, so I'm. This yeah. is so Will Duffy is a pastor of a church in in uh, Wheat Ridge, Colorado. I will be going to speak at that church. We're trying to find, I'm, I'm thinking we won't, but we're trying to find a flat earther to debate on Saturday night in person. Mm -hmm. um, uh, if, if that doesn't happen, I've got, I've got a, a good, a good uh, plan B. And then on Saturday morning, I'm Will's like, you just take Saturday or sorry, Sunday morning. It's like, you just take Sunday morning. I'm like, really? He goes, yeah. So, I will be doing a uh, something very different than than you've seen on, on my YouTube channel ever on Saturday or on Sunday morning. I keep saying Saturday on Sunday morning there. So if you're interested in something like that, um, you can you can come in person. And I think I do think that both of these will be live streamed. So. Amazing. Cool. So. All right, everybody. Thank you very much. We will see you next time. Here we go. Empty tune. Drop that beat. All right. Let it flow. Let yourself go. So I know that is the so, tempo. So, yeah, let's do this. So. Let's do this. Um. Yo, it's empty tune, the debunking tycoon. I shatter flat earthers, make a face of the moon. Your attempts are decent, but they'll swoon in the face of my logic like a deflated balloon. Oh, empty tune, the monsoon of cartoons. I'm the real say, send it first to their views. Your theories are like old brooms, sweeping ignorance or just spread in the fumes. FDFD stands for fumbling the facts, evidently. I drop truth bombs so splendidly. Your approach is soft, mine is unrelenting. I bring the science while you're just venting. Empty tune, the flipping with a silver spoon. I pick the pseudoscience science, make a change their tune. You're the sidekick, I'm the room. When it comes to debunking, I'm the room. Hold on a second. The Zoom call died. Everything died. No.